just because your man of God has said someone is suitable for you and you don't take your time, due diligence, who is this man? Who is this woman? Just because God has spoken does not mean that you two are. No, yeah. no. And most people in church are getting lost in that. And you find that someone is not taking time to know what are the weaknesses of this person? How is his anger like? Do you know my sister started telling me, you are doing wrong. I know that woman, she's a con. Martha, don't go into this. And in my head, I'm like, you are an enemy. Oh, ma. How can you attack a servant of God like that? This is a prophetess. This is a prophetess. You're saying she's a con? Yeah, you're calling her a con. You cannot do that to me. Go try that elsewhere. And my sister did everything to break us apart, Lynn. Coming back to Kenya, the moment we landed, a call comes through from prophetess. Just when we go to the house, a call comes through from prophetess. And she gives an instruction. You need to move from that place and find a comfortable neighborhood. People who are jobless. Find a comfortable neighborhood and you need to move there. And once you move there, I want you to keep my room for me. We moved to the Ndigwa. And the Ndigwa was expensive. Imagine moving from Umoja, a house of 9,000 shillings, all the way to the Ndigwa. 25,000 shillings and you are jobless. You don't have a job. You don't even know where tomorrow's food is coming from. You just know you have partners. Hello, good morning and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugin now. I have never had a guest that you guys requested more than my guest today. When we aired the story of Paul Magu, the one I did on heinous crimes, on the comment section you specifically said, Lynn, we need this woman to come and share her story of religion brainwashing, how a certain prophetess ruined her marriage and what happened to her because we as Africans, we need to start having these hard conversations, especially on all these cults and religion. If you send me to bring someone obviously I am going to do it and just to appreciate you for being active participants of our stories and even telling me sometimes you know channeling your energy and telling me Lynn this is the person we would love to listen to and that's why together we keep creating a very impactful society so I'm about to let her introduce herself but before that I have to say thank you to my people at Elegance Fashion Kenya for always coming through with amazing outfits for me me. This is not the first time you have seen me with these outfits. I want to make it known that it's okay. So I hope you love the fit. If you do, their contact details are right here on the screen. Go get yourself something if you can. And now without further ado, please allow me to let our incredible guest introduce herself. Hello. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Mama. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I am well, thank yes. you. Yes. Looking lovely. Asante. You get this a lot of times. Sir? Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going back mm -hmm. to knowing this conversation was supposed to happen when? It was supposed to happen in 2021. 2021. Yes. Yeah. Let me just tell you guys how this happened. Yeah. You know, on the comment you said we want her. Yeah. Then I go, I look for her contact details online. Now as I'm dialing, yeah. I already have her on my phone. Yes. And I'm like, oh my goodness, we spoke <laughs> in 2021. Yes, we did. But timing is everything. Timing is everything. Everything. Yeah. And I'm the one who had tried to reach out, yeah. but uh, somehow it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And I really thank God that it did not work. Okay. Because I told God, uh, the right timing, you connect me to Lynn. Mm. And 
because I know I have a story and I would want people yeah. to learn. Mm -hmm. Not that I want to play victim, not that I want to, to uh, acknowledge that it's by my strength that I'm here, mm -hmm. but because by the grace of God, people go through stuff and it is God that brings them out of it. Mm -hmm. And I really thank God yeah. because this was the best timing, mm -hmm. especially after you shared about Mago. Okay, yes. beautiful. Nice yeah. to have you here. Thank you. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Okay, my name is Martha. Uh, I'm a gospel artist. Yeah. Uh, I'm known as Martha Rena. Yes. It's not my real name. Yeah. I have real names. Yes. My real names are Martha Wangoi. Yeah. And I really thank God because I've been singing uh, since um, since um, it's been 15 years oh, wow. since I recorded my first song. Yeah. And it's well known. Yes. Yeah. It's called. Uh, maybe I can mention it. Yes, mention it. Please. Okay. It's called Nafsi Yangu ya Kungoja Bwana. Okay. Kuliko alenzi wangoja vya subuhi. Can you sing something for us? Yes, go, I can. Go on. Okay. Uh -huh. Nafsi yangu ya kungoja bwana kuliko walinzi wango javyo asubuhi. Yeah. When I just say that, most people get recognized. It is, yes, personally, yes. I, I, it's a song that people hear, but yeah. I don't think they know this is the face yeah, this is behind the face. that yes. beautiful voice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, I'm a born again Christian, mm -hmm. and then I'm a former pastor's wife, yeah. uh, currently divorced. I'm a mother of one. And I am a third born in a family of four children. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I look at you. There's so much grace. Thank you. We were just speaking a few minutes before this interview. Yeah. And we almost went into this whole theory yes. when we were talking about your dad. And yeah. I know we will get there. Yeah. But you said, mm. if that's the role, mm. having a father. Yes. If just having a father meant him playing this role in your life, yes. that's enough. Yes. I don't want to jump the ship. Yeah. So I want to just be very silent. Okay. If you could take us back to your story, mm. you know, growing up. Yes. Then meeting this man mm. and why mm. this whole brainwashing mm. almost messed your life up. Yes. And how by God's grace you came out of it because mother, let me tell you. Yes. When we go back to the story of that Nigerian woman. Yes. And she cried so much yeah. in silence. Yeah. And no one knew. Yeah. I look at you and I'm like, God, yeah. no matter how tough the test is, yes. this woman is still alive. I I thank God for that, yeah. actually. I wake up in the morning, I don't look at, at what I don't have. I look at life and I lift my hands and thank God. Yeah. First of all, I want to encourage people. When you see someone divorced, when you see someone single, either divorced or just single with a child or without, mm. do not judge because most people are not there by choice, especially the divorced people. You don't just wake up one day and walk out of your marriage. Yeah. It does not happen. Yeah. It is something you have thought about. Yes. You've looked at the pros. You've looked at the cons. You've looked at the impact, especially if you have children. You've looked at those children and done all your math in your head. And you've seen that this is the only way out. Yeah. Going back to my story, um, maybe people will understand that as we go on. Mm -hmm. So I grew up, I was born in a family of four. Yeah. Both my parents are alive by the grace of God. Yes. But my dad uh, was a pastor. He still is a pastor. Yeah. But he used to work with uh, one of the pastors in Nairobi, still doing well, mm -hmm. that man of God. Mm -hmm. And my dad was like, um, I would say an accountant, yes. uh, but he was part of the pastoral team. Mm -hmm. I share this story as we've been told by his friends. Okay. Not like from an account I can really confirm mm. by myself. Mm -hmm. So my dad uh, fell out with this bishop. Mm. When he fell out with the bishop, he was running away for his life. So when he was leaving us, it was not something he would have wanted to do. You see another case of a separation yes. that was not really the, the will and the desire of these people. Mm. So we are told that my dad was just running away for his life because they had fell out completely. completely. And my mom once told us that she had looked for him 
for around six months. Yes. She didn't know where he was. So she would wake up, and I have memories of that, very little. My mom would wake up, leave and go, and say that in the evening, I have no idea. So later, my grandfather's family, my father's family, yes. they told us that they used to hold hands, asking God for my dad's body. <laughs> like wherever he is, bring him back to us, we will bury. So for, for around six years or so, no one knew where he was. So you can see this little girl is now finding herself in a family where it's not stable, yes. you know, from the time she's discovering herself, mm -hmm. it's not stable. So she's out there trying to understand what is life, what is not life, what is love, what is parental love, you know, and what is not. So I grew up in such a situation. Yes. And when we were young, we were moved a lot. So when dad left, my mom took us to her mom's place. And when we went to her mom's place, there were two other kids, my mm. cousins. So mm. we were six. Mm. So you can imagine grandparents raising six children who are below 12. Mm. So you see how yes, tough that was. So there was no love. You don't remember like being embraced. It's just you wake up, do this, do this, mm. do this. So mm. this girl is growing in a place where it's so empty. And from a very tender age, I was desiring to know God for myself because I knew this life, there is no way I'll make it if it is not someone that is divine that will carry me through. Mm. And at this point, you don't know what next. Yes. You don't know where else you're going. You don't know how long your grandparents will be alive, you know. So it's that traumatic childhood that I'm coming from. And at one point, my grandfather was a, he was huge on alcohol yeah. and maybe he had his own problems. Mm. It's not personal with mm. us. Mm. So at one point he just wakes up and says, these children, we need to build them a house elsewhere. Like they just need to leave. They just need to go. So the next thing we find out is that we are being moved again. Wow. We are moving from my grandfather's mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. to my paternal grandfather's house. And my paternal grandfather was way older and he was way sickly. And, but he wanted us to be with him yeah. because we belonged to his son. Mm. And he didn't have a wife. My grandmother had died way before. Mm. I'm told just after I was born around mm -hmm. there, she had passed on. Mm -hmm. So we were now into this place and we are living with uh, my grandfather and a house boy. Mm. Again, that this life where you're trying to discover what is life, who are you, where. I like to give my childhood uh, background because it's such traumas that can lead you to make some decisions that you, you wonder, how did I, how did did I, I do get, that? Yeah. But when you look at it closely, you mm. are looking for something. Mm. You are looking for be a belonging that didn't happen. You are looking for answers that eventually didn't come, you know. So we were raised by my grandfather. The biggest thing my grandfather did for us, he gave us a good education. Wow. And I am grateful, forever grateful, because he took us to the best boarding school. We were in boarding school uh, by class six mm. with my sister mm. and my uh, younger brother came through after that, my mm. big brother also. Mm -hmm. So he took us to a very good school. Yeah. And that's where I took it upon myself to teach myself how to, to, how to speak, you know, yes. how to communicate with people. Yeah. That's the, the place I taught myself. Because you I are a beautiful oh. communicator. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's the education that my grandfather gave us. Yes. And he participated in that with my uncles. Yeah. So he, he made sure that we had everything we needed in boarding school you can imagine a very old man he's he can barely walk he can barely see but he's ensuring that before he goes to be with the lord these children will have the best beautiful bless him if that is not god lean then i don't know because that's god that's god because he's already securing your your future mm -hmm. in a way mm -hmm. and after that my grandfather he passed on yeah. while we were in class six. Mm. 
just after we had joined boarding school, after the first term, he passed on, but he left that great legacy. Like in my heart, I always thank God when I remember him yeah. because he ensured that we will have the best education that we would have desired. Mm -hmm. So now this girl continues to grow. You see, now we've come into this place where we are almost settling down. Yes. Like, yeah, grandpa, you know, love. We have what we need and all that. He's spoiling us good. And then he's gone. Once he's gone, most of the time we come back home from school. There's no one. <laughs> you go for the key to the neighbor's houses. Come open. Panga yourself. Mm. What are we eating? Mm. What are we drinking? Mm. You know? And at this point, my mom was working in Naivasha. Yeah. And my grandpa's is Nakuru. Oh. So she would also come to visit yes. during the holidays. Mm. So she would come be with us during the holidays. And then once we go back to school, she'll go back to work. Mm. So you can see this childhood. It's very lonely. Yeah. It's surrounded but lonely. And it's, it's a childhood that is painful but not painful. Good. Because you're, you're, you're looking out. You, you want to find out who am I? Why am I here? Um, what is love? That is the question. And who is God? That, those are the two questions yes. that kept pushing me. Yeah. So after now, my grandpa is dead and my mom now came and resigned because she was like, my children cannot be staying this alone all the time. My uncles had made arrangements where a cousin would come, mm -hmm. uh, move, move schools and come and teach in a school nearby. Mm -hmm. So that should be with us. Mm -hmm. But it came to a point where it, it was not possible. Mm -hmm. So my mom resigned. Mm -hmm. And thank God, when my grandfather passed on, he left a will and said, nobody should kick this woman out wow. of my house. Wow. So to date, the place I call home in Nakuru is my grandfather who left us. Wow. And if it was not for that, I don't know where we would be. But God had secured that. Amen. So primary school is over. Uh, performed how we did with my sister and now we we secured a high school mm. a girls high school mm -hmm. so this girl is continuing to so in primary school i joined the cu yeah. and i was i don't remember if i was made the the, the prayer coordinator or the chair lady yeah. something yeah. so i'd given my life to christ then i told god i want to serve you i want to know you for myself because the way life is going i cannot do it by myself and i cannot i cannot I cannot lead life not knowing yes. what the future is yes. and just be by myself. Mm -hmm. So it continued like that into high school, see you chair lady, um, music coordinator, you know, from one, from two, yeah. from three, from four, to yeah. see you chair lady. And life went on like that with all the struggles, the school fee struggles, because now in high school is my mm -hmm. uncles, mm -hmm. every other uncle is contributing. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, I thank God for my extended yes. family yes. because they made sure that these children have gone through school Beautiful. at least until from four. Mm. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Mm. So once we finished, uh, we cleared uh, the fourth form with my sister. So my dad was not able to take my brothers to college and all that. So it was just my sister and I. Mm. So we got placement in Kenya Utali College. Oh. Nice college. Yes. Through my cousin, again, it was a family thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People just working together. Mm -hmm. So my sister and I went to college. Mm -hmm. We did a short course, mm -hmm. uh, front office. I thank God for that. Yeah. And I really honor God because of that opportunity. Mm -hmm. After clearing, now that's when we went separate, separate ways. Yeah. And when we went separate ways, I got a job in one of the hotels. Mm -hmm. After, after persevering, mm -hmm. you know, internship, you know, all that process. By the grace of God, I got a job in one of the hotels. Yeah. And that's where now I, I began to discover who is Martha. What would Martha want? And that's when, when I'm at the reception, I, I would, I would, I would um, tune into music stations yes. that have music. Yeah. And I was singing so loud, you know when you're just alone and when guests would come they're like is that you singing yeah that's good D don't let it go so that's wow. how my music talent grew. began to grow mm. at that point and it's at that point i felt by the way i can sing i can sing i can give it a try so that's a story for another day yeah. and that's how now my yes. my talent began to to grow mm. and i thank god that so far by his grace 
I'm yet to tap fully, Amen. but I'll get there. We, we soldier on. Yes, we, yeah. we soldier on. Yeah. So now after that, uh, well, after this, um, getting this job, it got to a point where after doing Nafsi Yangu, invitations were so many. Meru, Narok, you know, uh, Kibera, you know, every other place, every other place. You needed this Sunday. We have a crusade on Wednesday. Come, da, 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 da. Sing. Come sing. And I was like, I, I think it's not balancing in half because in my job, I was working up to Sundays mm -hmm. sometimes. So I was like, I think I'm going to give this thing a mm -hmm. try. I resigned. Yeah. After resigning, everyone was shocked because they were like, oh, you're good in your job. Da, da, da. I was like, let me go and follow this thing. It was burning inside yeah. me. And I thank God I did that because mm. I learned a lot about music that season than I would have learned sitting down. And it's good to, to point out that I don't encourage people to resign. Mm. Don't resign from your job mm. because you have a talent of music. Mm. Don't resign from your job because uh, you feel called yes. and you feel gifted. Yeah. You need that income to establish other areas mm -hmm. of your life. Mm. So don't do as I say. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that was a very personal decision mm. that I wouldn't enforce on every other person. Okay. So I started moving. I went to Rwanda. I went to Uganda. I went to all these other places. Meru, you know, I, I Nafsi Yangu. I usually tell people I use that season to the best. Amen. To the best. Sometimes you gotta recognize a season. Yes, yes, yes. So now I'm done with uh, moving all over the place yes. and all that. So one time, I am planning to. I was planning to go to Zanzibar mm -hmm. to sing. Mm -hmm. I had, in, I had been invited. Yes. And it's good to mention that all these places I was going by bus. Rwanda, Burundi, like I had a passport and I was yes. like, yeah, tickets, it's, it's not a big deal. Yes. So I, I traveled and traveling is my hobby. Yeah. So I really took good use of that. Yeah. So one time I'm supposed to travel to uh, Zanzibar, Zanzibar and there was this pastor, a very close friend of mine. And this pastor had known me through Nafsiangu mm -hmm. and he had invited me to his church yeah. and he used to call himself a prophet. Yes. It was called Prophet Kibe. Yeah. He invited me to his church and several times I had gone to sing and I had taken my music friends to, to go and sing. Yeah. And anytime you go there, you, you get a word, a yes. word of knowledge. You know how these things excite Christians. So I'm like, come, come, I'll take you somewhere and you'll get a word, yeah. you know. So innocently, I would take people, they would be prayed for and their lives would change in their own unique ways mm. that they themselves can, can mm. explain. Mm. So for me, I, he would tell me things that I was going through. And that really captured me. Like, um, one time I was to go to Sudan. I had been invited to Sudan to go yeah. and sing. Yeah. And I had a dream. Going to Sudan, it's like I would get an accident or something. So before I shared it with him, this man calls me mm. and tells me, don't go to Sudan. There's going to be war. By that season, there may be war. They, they've already started fighting, but it may affect you in your journey. Mm -hmm. So don't go. Mm -hmm. So you see, he confirmed what was yes. in my heart. So I canceled. So that's the kind of people I wanted to associate with. I say that just to, to give a background. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to cling to such a person that can give me counsel and advice uh, that is godly. Yeah. So it comes a point where he tells me, there is a woman of God from South Africa. I want you to meet. And this woman of God, so by this time, you know, he's like a dad to me. And he, he goes like, this woman, you will love her. She's gifted, she's anointed. And that's what every Christian wants to hear when yes. they're going for a meeting somewhere. Yes. She's gifted, she's anointed, she's a prophetess. I want you to meet her and you can get to judge for yourself. So he tells me, the coming Sunday, where are you ministering? Mm -hmm. I told him somewhere at Thicker Road. Mm. And he goes like, because you can't make it for the morning service, I'll pick you in town and I'll be with the woman of God in the car and we'll go to a fellowship in Loresho. Mm. And I'm like, that's a good plan. So after ministering in Thicker Road, came all the way to town, they picked me up and we went to Loresho. Mm. And in the car, this woman 
Like she kept looking at me. I was sitting on the back left. She would, she would turn and say, you're such a worshiper. Imagine that would surprise me. <laughs> like I've been a worshiper yes. for like five years yes. at this point. You're such a worshiper and you're going places. And I'm like, my God, that's what I want. Prophesy in places. my life. Yes. <laughs> so she goes like, you will minister to nations, young girl. The moment you enter this car, the, the spirit of worship filled the atmosphere. So I know I'm a worshiper. I kneel yes. down in the house. Yes. Like me and God, I've learned to pour my heart out to him because he's been the one, you know my yes. story. Yes. He's been God in my life. And I love to outpour everything I have unto him. Mm -hmm. But that surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> so it caught me so hard. And, and then she goes like, you will go to nations. Let's go to the fellowship. We will minister. Yes. We will talk more well mm. there. And in this fellowship, this woman has a son, spiritual son, okay? And she, she has, it's like this guy is in the fellowship that day. So all the way from town to Loresho, me na prophesy you too, eh, you know? Eh. You go to, I'm excited like, this is the clique I want. Yes. This is the type of people I want I'm to walk. I'm in the right crowd. I'm in the right crowd, yes. Lynn. And we have to go to the nations. Hey. The nations, we are coming. Amen. <laughs> so, getting to the fellowship, there was this guy in the fellowship. And just when we were entering and sitting down to have a cup of tea, this woman tells me, you need to get married. Hold on. You met this woman a few minutes ago. A few minutes ago. She has prophesied to you. She has prophesied nations. You, nations. Yes. Then this woman, you just sat and is telling you you need to get married. You need to get married, Martha. How old are you? I told her, 24. She says, you, you need to get married. And I, in my head, I'm like, I've never wanted to get married until I'm 28. It, you know how the, you said goals in growing up? Like, by 28, I want to have achieved this and this and this. Yes. And here I am. I've not done most of that. But I'm already being told I'm getting married. I need to get married. And because it's the prophet of God that is speaking, you know, you start rearranging stuff in your head. By the way, I was to get married at 28. I think we can, we can shorten that. 24 looks good. Yeah, 24 looks good. So yeah. I think getting married is not bad. Yeah. And in this fellowship, this guy sits across so i'm on that side with the prophetess and he sits across and starts looking at me and then in that conversation he said i have met my wife or oh, i've met my wife that was the most confusing fellowship i have ever been hapa una rearrange 28 to 24 you know you're doing lots of math yes. in your head like i can get married and, you know and then someone already is saying, I've met my wife. And I'm like, hey, this is too much for me. And I didn't want anything to do with him. And he starts speaking in tongues. Uh -uh. Yes. I have met my wife. I have met my wife. I have met my wife. And I'm like, goodness, this fellowship should end. I need to go home. <laughs> Now when he's saying he's met his wife, yeah. how is your pastor, friend, the prophet, now the guy? He's interacting with, with other people. And where is this prophetess from South Africa? She's somehow next to me. So it's, she can hear this can guy hear. saying, I have met my wife. Yes. And the guy is her spiritual son. son. So, so they, they already have a connection. They already, they already know connection. each other. They already know each other. And the same day you meet this prophetess is the same day yes. the son will say, I have met my wife and start shakarara. Yes. Away. Imagine same day you're, you're being told nations. Same day you're being told uh, you need to get married. Same day uh, I, have met, my I wife. have met my wife. That was a confusing day. And... When the fellowship ended, during the fellowship, I remember she, she prayed for me. I don't know what she prayed about, but I remember her laying hands on me. And all of a sudden, this guy is just, you know, there is, is like a room, like uh, a big room. Yes. 
and everyone is a fellowship of like 15 people yeah. so people are praying all over the place but i can hear this guy is praying somewhere close to me and prophetess is laying hands on me you know it was very confusing and after the fellowship the guy comes to me i have met my wife and i thank god that i have met you and in my head i'm like i'm not your wife thank you but the fear like this is too much this could be god how do i know <laughs> you know how do i know marriage is not something you've been thinking about up to this point and all of a sudden it's something you have to really you know try to deconstruct and all that so the pastor who drove me to that place with prophetess offers to drop me home and this time he asks the guy to join him so i'm assuming the back seat it's future wife and this guy front seat back seat was myself yes i asked him to Aka ukombele. Aka ukombele. oh man cause eh. so the, the the pastor yes. the guy and myself yes back left all the way to my place this guy is speaking in tongues speaks in tongues looks back says i have met my wife continues speaking in tongues clapping you know like rejoicing and i'm like goodness i have never seen anything like this i've just met you since adam and eve did <laughs> Like, I don't even know who you are. Yes. I don't know where you come from. And you're calling me your wife. And that was confusing. I went home. When they dropped me, uh, Pastor Kibe said, my daughter, I'll see you soon. Call me tomorrow if it's okay. We can meet and we'll get to talk about today. Yes. I was like, yeah, I'll call you. So when I got home, switched off my phone and slept like confused i didn't even pray about anything i slept morning kwamka i tried calling you i tried calling you like six times and it's the guy i had taken his number pastor had asked me save this guy's number so you see how so i tried calling i tried so i called him back and he's like um mother i'd like us to meet because there's something very special I want to tell you. Of course, you know, um, I have an idea what he wants to tell me. Mm. But I'm like, what happens to dating? Knowing someone, courting someone, you yes. know, all yes. that. Let's and have fun. Yeah, you know, let's have fun. Let's know each other. And I was like, okay, when would you want to meet me? And he's like, next week on Tuesday. I told him, I'm going to Zanzibar this, this week. And unless we talk once I'm back, and I'll let you know once I'm back. And as I went to Zanzibar, my Facebook was flooded, inbox. I can't wait for you to come back. I miss you. I miss you. There's something I want to tell you. That was the most confusing. And then before I went to Zanzibar, Pastor Kibe calls me and tells me, did you see what happened? And he laughs. I'm like, yeah, I saw what happened. And he's like, begin loving him. Begin loving him. Oh, mother. How have you saved him on your phone? I said, I've saved his name. Yeah. And he's like, could you change that and call it my prince? That's pastor telling me that. Lynn, that was the most confusing season wow. of my life. That's abuse. Yeah. Now looking back. Yes. Yes, and I was so naive. And remember, I've grown up not having attention. You see? Trauma. There we go. I've grown up not knowing, like someone following up on what I'm doing. It was always about school, grandfather, grandmother. So there is this part of me. It's nowadays that I'm trying to deconstruct what that was all about. That loneliness that I grew up with took advantage. I would say it took advantage of my naivety. And I gave in to stuff I would not have. But when I look at it at a positive side, if I went through it for someone to learn and for someone not to go through it, then it was worth it. It's well. It is well. So 
I went to Zanzibar. Facebook. Facebook. Inbox. I can't wait for you to come back. Now I've saved in my prints. I don't know what kind of prints he is. Wow. Coming back, I, I, I texted him on Facebook and told him I'll be back on this and this day. I can't really remember the exact, like it was a Monday or whatever. But I told him I'll be back on this day. We can catch up after two days so that I'll have rested. Came back all the way by bus from Zanzibar to, to Nairobi, all the way to my place. I used to live on Waiyaki Way. All the way, rested a whole day. And the next day, uh, after a few days, um, we get to meet up. And the guy is like, the day I saw you, I knew that you're my wife. Hmm. And I want you to start um, embracing this fact because God told me that you're my wife. God told him. That's what he told me. Oh. God told him. And in my head, I'm like, this God needs to talk to me as well. Because this is about my life. Mm -hmm. This is not about your life. It's about me also. He needs to talk to me. And I cannot say, Lynn, that God told me, this is your husband from heaven. You know, there is nothing like that that happened. But God filled my heart with peace. And with peace, I knew it is well with my soul. <laughs> it's not something I can tell someone, run with peace. No. Go dig. Who is he? Who are his people? You know? What was their family like? Imagine at this point, I have no idea who his mother is, who his, you know, where he comes from. Nothing. But I chose to to walk with this peace. And the prophetess and the pastor are now in this. In this. And when I look back today, I know beyond doubt, prophetess had mentioned, I'm coming to this meeting. Pastor had mentioned to her, there is a girl coming. That's how I look at it right now. And she knew maybe there is a son of hers who, who needs someone. That's how I look at it today. And she decided, this is it. I have the CV of this girl from Pastor, and Pastor has this guy's CV from Prophetess. You know, that's how I look at it today. Such and a that, setup. Exactly. It's a setup. setup. No word can better describe it's a it. Setup. It's a setup. And there are people in church. Just because your man of God has said someone is suitable for you and you run for it because MOG has said this is my spouse and you don't take your time due diligence who is this man who is this woman just because God has spoken does not mean that you two are no yeah. no and sometimes it's not like God has spoken, you know, God has spoken. Yes. But is this man of God that has felt like this and this the best, mm. you know? Mm. And most people in church are getting lost in that. And you find that someone is not taking time to know what are the weaknesses of this person? How is his anger like? You know those things you just, those that says the Lord yes. covers them? Yes. Who is he? Did he grow up in a single mother family? What are the traumas what he's experiencing? What are the traumas he's experiencing? You get it. What is the childhood he's trying to overcome? What are his battles? What are his battles? Because you could just be coming mm. in as a numbing, you know? Mm -hmm. You are the medicine that will numb that thing. Whoa. But it will never go. Yes. It will keep popping yeah. up. You numb it today as a wife. Tomorrow it pops up yes. in another way. And you get in yourself into a very toxic situation. Absolutely. And you're blaming everyone, but you didn't do your due diligence. That's why I'm here to talk to people. Because I did not. At this point, I'm told there is an engagement. In whose church? Pastor's church. Pastor Kibe. The Kibe guy. Yes. There is an engagement. I think uh, coming Sunday. Um, and that engagement i'll have i'll be hey, yeah. hold on 
Now let's work with the timeline here. This is too fast. Yeah. By the time you met this guy, this is my wife, this is my wife. Mm -hmm. To the time they are saying there's going to be an engagement. Mm -hmm. How many years had passed? It was less than a month. Allow me to ask. Yeah. You know, as a woman, there's the kind of man you want. Let's even go to the surface level admiration. How this person looks. Yeah. Does he clean up nice? How is, does he talk? How can we vibe? Because for me, if we can't have a conversation, like if we can't talk for hours and hours without me getting bored, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If this person cannot sustain a conversation, beautiful yeah. way, I feel I'm home, it's peaceful, I can be with this person every day, I'm out. Yeah. So to you, first let's go to the looks. Mm -hmm. Was he your type? No. <laughs> the behavior. Did you even get to understand any? No. I was riding on the fact that he's a pastor. What? Yeah. God, I have chills right now. Yeah. Because I was like, with a pastor, you're safe. He's a man of God. He's a man of God. He tries to touch you. God tells him, you dare. <laughs> you know, he those, knows. those things we have in the air that are not real. Yeah. Like, he... he this is, an, this is someone that can hear God. So in a month, now you're heading to your engagement. Yeah. Are you telling your family? Good question. Of course, man, me, I'll be going to my sister, I'll be like, she calls me, me, me. I will be like, are you talking to your sister? Yeah. Are you telling any of your siblings? What happened? After now, uh, I'm now beginning to follow them uh, when they're going to preach, you know? These two were a pair. The prophetess and emoji. And remember, she's coming from South Africa. Yeah. So she comes to conduct meetings with some Kenyan people. It was a fellowship. Yeah. It, it crashed, like yes. crashed way after. And I felt like I need to follow them up wherever they go. So anytime, uh, that time out here, there is a meeting. There is a meeting of pastors, I mm -hmm. think along Gong Road. Mm -hmm. And the guy would tell me, come join us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Prophetess wants you to be with us. So I would go following and, and getting to find out what, how do these people behave, you know? And every other meeting out, I could see there is God here. There is God here. God's presence was God's there. God's presence is here. And I, it's like I use that to numb questions, to, to, to suppress questions I had. And my sister got wind of it. I don't remember if I'm the one who told her or someone told her first. But at one point I shared with her, do you know my sister started telling me, you are doing wrong. I know that woman, she's a con. Mother, don't go into this. And in my head I'm like, you are an enemy. Oh man. How can you attack a servant of God like that? This is a prophetess. This is a prophetess. You're saying she's a con? Yeah, you're calling her a con. You cannot do that to me. Go try that elsewhere. And my sister did everything to break us apart, Lynn. From the time we met to the time we got married, it was 10 months. 10 months. I'll never forget that. We met in June 2011. We got married in April, Good Friday. 2012. 2012. That's not even a year. And my sister did everything to bring us apart. When he organized a dowry, of course, through me going to negotiate. Yes. Imagine I even negotiated uh, for the amount he would, you know, Tour. as a good girl. Yeah. Like, we are going far with this guy, mom. Do something. Be very kind to him. Don't let him be pressed down by, by the men, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the parents. Yes. yes. So my sister went and tried to cut, cut off that mm -hmm. dowry ceremony. Mm -hmm. So let's go back a little. Yeah. So I'm told there's an engagement ceremony in Pastor Kibe's church. And when we go to Pastor Kibe's church, I'll be given a ring, an engagement ring. I look back and I laugh at myself, the naivety. But my dad is a pastor. Sometimes I think I was looking for my father. And it made me, you know, 
I was like blind, like this is what I want. So when the engagement day comes, I call my friends, we go, then in the morning service, we sing, we minister, you know, music. It just makes you very happy and excited. And then in the afternoon, Prophetess is coming to preach and he's coming with her son, my prince, and there's going to be an engagement. So <laughs> this is very funny when I remember. So Prophetess starts preaching. And I'm like, when she's preaching, I'm just looking, who is this woman? I can't admiration. Tell you. Yeah. Pure admiration. Yes. But there is something, there's a hunch. I can't really, you know, there's that ka thing. Yeah. And you keep pushing it away like, yes. just, this is a man yes. of God. This is a woman of God. So she's preaching. I'm just looking. I look at how she's dressed. Gorgeous, you know, nails, gorgeous hair. God. And I'm lost. And I'm waiting for my engagement in this. Imagine being engaged in a church service. So I wait. They start praying for people. They are praying for people. And I noticed every time she's praying for people, my prince is following her. She's, he's like the right hand person of Thank this you. woman. So they're praying, they're praying and all that. And then I'm like, oh my gosh. It's almost 7 p.m. People are still being prayed for. And I came for an engagement. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I cannot stop this service. People's, God's people need to be delivered. Yes. You know, they need to be prayed for. This is not about me. But when will it end? So I wait, I wait. And at one point, my musician friends, we were four, mm -hmm. they start leaving. Mm -hmm. They come tap me. And I told one of them, who's a girl, I told her, today is my engagement service. And she laughed. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone is leaving. Mm. She's almost leaving. And I told her, just wait a little. Yeah. So we went outside. And I took an asha and I told her, you see that guy that's laying hands on people with the prophetess? Go and tell him Martha wants to go. So the Asha didn't get what I said. Mm. She went and called him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My priest comes out and he's like, Kwanini umenitua service? Kwanini umenitua kwa service? And I'm like, engagement. In my head, like, wasn't today the day? And I, I was so confused. I told him, it's okay. I need to go. Imekua usiku, acha miniende. It's fine. But kuna kitu uko meongea about. And I, I, I thought it was today. I was like, Goja kwanza tumalize maombi. Let's finish the prayer first. I'll yes. talk to you. Wow. And I left. Niligia kwa basilin. I cried. I was like, <laughs> that was supposed to be my engagement. And I'm, I'm lost. Like, what am, what am I getting myself into? I'm not a priority here. This is about this too. I'm not, it's not, I'm not the, you I'm know. I'm not anywhere. Yeah, I'm not anywhere. So anyway, mm. I went home, mm -hmm. slept, and the following day he calls me and tells me, we'll meet in town on Wednesday. And when we met in town, that's when I got my <laughs> engagement ring. How, like? <laughs> he took it, he took it out of, of a box. Mm. And he's like, is, is this the kind you'd want? Like, I'm like, sit on end Bali, by the way. My own. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> what? In my head, I knew we're going to nations with this guy, Lin. Wherever he is in life, I don't care. Do you know he gave me that ring, Niliji Valisha? I was like, I'm good. Niliji Valisha. And that's how my engagement happened. Wow. And from there, we meet every other day. And most of those days, let's just say I'm the one who is paying the bills. I didn't know how to value myself. Atakamani is chips of a hundred shillings, you know. I didn't see him having the need to take care of that. I'll do it most of the time. And when he comes and says, oh, today I can do it. So it was not a big deal because Lynn, we are going to nations with this guy. Whoa. 
we are going to nations. And he has a destiny. That's what Pastor Kibe used to tell me. The kind of destiny that this man of God carries, you people will go far. And that's where I was lost. So you are Nafuata, big plans. Yes. Okay. Nafuata, you plan future. Mm. And that's what most of us do. But there is the balance of what is what is the ideal, you know? Where we are in life. Can we sit down? Yeah, to Nanda Nations, my sister. Yes. But this is the plan. This, this is, is the plan that will take to us nation. to the nations. Yeah. So you guys, you already arrived. We've already arrived. Without the journey. By the power of the Holy Spirit. We have arrived. We are there. And whoever is trying to come in between us. Is an enemy. Is an enemy to this great destiny. And that is where I lost Martha. At 25 now. Yeah. That's where I lost Martha. But I'm getting her back. That's where I lost her. My sister became my enemy, number one. Imagine it's now, 10 years later, that we are mending our relationship with my sister. She became my enemy. She became the voice of the enemy in our marriage. The Dembo. Yes. And I remember one point telling my ex, that. Let me call him my prince because that was, was telling my prince. My sister says this woman is a con woman. Can you please explain that to me? And he was like, I am going to pray and I will stop her. She will stop attacking the anointed of God. She will stop. Do you know now that God me into fear? Like, hey, leave my sister. Don't hurt her. You see the kind of fear you're walking in? An intimidation, very high intimidation. And so after like two days, prophetess writes me on Facebook from South Africa. And she tells me, we are fasting for three days to bring your sister down. She texted me. And I'm like, goodness, I didn't want to get into this to hurt my people, you know, for people that I love to get hurt. And I was... I just went silent. From there, I said, whatever my sister tells me, stays with me. I'll not share with anyone, but I'll keep it in my heart. And I thank God that she continued to feed me with stuff. And years later, one plus one, one plus one was two. Yes. I, I kept ticking. I knew this. I was told this. I was warned. I was warned. And I thank God mm -hmm. I'm mending my relationship with my sister mm -hmm. right now. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <sighs> November yeah. the 5th, yeah. dowry, 2011. I have those days like I cannot forget dowry. So I go home and he sends some cash like how they're they are supposed to and to sponsor that event. Yeah. So I go prepare stuff. and. I go telling women, uh, please come help me. This is my mom talks to people and anybody we talk to, my sister goes and talks to them. <laughs> <laughs> and tells them, you're not supposed to come. She's getting into a mistake. She's messing up with her life. So the women who came are those who came to seek a second opinion from me. Like, are you sure? This is what you need. Yeah. You need our help. And like five, six of them came and helped me. And the event happened. Mm. And my sister was absent. She was just walking all over the place. Like she, she didn't want to get involved. Hands off completely. Serving guests, whatever. Nothing. Nothing. And looking back, I'm like, oh my goodness, she was right. She was right. But she's my elder sister. Mm. So I was like. You thought you're 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 the voice of the enemy in this. Yes. Don't leave me alone. So now, when I got married uh, from November, now he's planning for the wedding. Yes. There is no money. There is no money for the wedding, and yet prophetess just keeps saying, "You guys will have the biggest wedding. Your wedding will shake the city of Nairobi. It will shake the city." And I'm like. Send us the money. Thank you. In my head, 
Because I'm like, you're speaking so big, but the guy has no money. I don't have money like I had kept, like this is, this is my savings. Mm -hmm. I don't. I've just been ministering all over the place. Yes. And there's no money for the wedding. Mm -hmm. So we continued planning, borrowing left, right, center. And the more we hit targets through borrowed money, Boring money, boring money, boring. Prophetess just is just keeping tabs with us. Like, so far, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Da, da, da. And then she got to a point where she said, uh, I'll buy the, the gown and the, and the suit. And then all of a sudden, I'll not buy the gown, I'll buy the suit. So again, Martha has to look for money for the gown. I don't have the gown. Luckily, I posted on Facebook, mm -hmm. I'm getting married. So as the celebrity of Nafsi Yango, yes. you know, people are like, yeah, we, we can come through. Oh, wow. You get a thousand from here, a thousand from there. You reach out to people, you borrow money, you know. My Nafsi Yango thing really came through that season. And luckily, there is a lady from America. She said, oh, the girl is getting married. She sent me a gown. Wow. All the way. And... In those seasons, looking back, I saw God just reaching out to me and encouraging me that it is well. And that was one of those. Like, it is well. You don't have to worry about the gown anymore. It is well. So April came, mm. April the 6th, 2012. Yes. We get married. Do you know Prophetess is our best couple? And they jetted in the day before the wedding. You know the role of a best couple, Lina? Yeah. What's your sex life like? You know, finances. Who are you? You know how best couples should yes. really be there? Yes. I never saw that. They jet yesterday. They today jet is the yesterday. Wedding. Today is the wedding. And even with all the phone calls that we can make and all that, there's nothing we are speaking about us. It's just the future that you guys have. You are destined for greatness. The destiny. Like this girl is, you are a gift to this man. And this man is a gift to you. The destiny you guys have will shake nations. And mother was so in love with those words. And there was no plan. How are these nations going to be shaken? Nothing. You're getting in married into marriage so empty. You don't know. Even matters, bedroom matters, nothing. Uko green, uko green. This is not something I've tried before. Like you're green. You don't know anything. Ma. You are clueless. The guy seems clueless. I'm and telling you, Lynn, it was, it was a mess. And all the best cups. So the prophetess also had a husband. Yes. But... All she kept saying was, you are destiny. Yes. Now, All we are talking about is destiny. Yes. And how great we are. So you are 25 now. Yeah. And you are prince? Same. Same, same age. Yes. Same okay. age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we get into marriage. Yeah. Honeymoon was a mess. I don't even know what to talk about that. It was a mess. After coming back from the honeymoon, the house is empty. You are sitting on the floor. You know, this girl knows the destiny of this guy. We are sitting on the floor and I would ask him, what's the plan? Like, you know, so far, so far said, kuna are 10,000, 5,000. But I noticed, let's go to the wedding day first. You see this money that people give the yes, couple? Yes. And that's the money you're supposed to plan yourself yes, with. It. Like, how are we going to use this money mm -hmm. during the honeymoon? Mm -hmm. And coming back from the honeymoon, how are we going to use it? And do you know, my prince told me that he had promised God that he was going to tithe 15% of that money to prophetess. And then I think give some seed, appreci appreciation yes. seed yes. to prophetess. So we went to the honeymoon basically with no money because you've... Tithed and you have yeah. sworn a seed. And a red flag I saw, as we were opening the envelopes, she was standing, looking. How much? How much? What? She's like, she's there. And I'm like, in my head, I was like, this is supposed to be us. Yeah. She should not be here. And I'm, then you're like, 
whatever, it's okay. She's a prophetess. Servant of God. So off to the honeymoon back. No furniture, nothing. So I'm like, we will start from zero. I knew there was no furniture before. But you know it's good to tell me, like, after the honeymoon, this is what we're yes. going to do. Yes. So no plan, nothing. Sitting on the floor, nothing. And I noticed there are partners that are involved in MOG's life, my ex. Mm. These partners, they are the ones who've been sponsoring his life. Because he doesn't work. Because he doesn't work. He doesn't have like a... No. He, he just uh, does the word. Yes, he just does ministry. Yes. He just goes around preaching. Mm -hmm. And then these partners are the ones who are supporting everything that he does. Oh. So now that I'm in the picture, we are now relying on partners. Because I'm also... I don't, I don't have a job. I've been ministering all over the place as a singer. I don't have a job. Back to my original, don't let go of your job. Because? Because you have this yes. great vision. Yes. Yeah. So we don't have, we both are not working and we are sitting on the floor. And when I try to find out, like, what's your plan? What's your plan? Well, what are we planning about where we are in six months time? If we would bring a baby into this marriage right now, where will the baby lie? Mm. Where will guests be sitting? There was nothing. It was silent. But anytime partners call, they send in money. In a day, you would find that we are getting like three phone calls of partners. They get prayed for. They are asked for a seed. And like you need to sow a seed for the next level that you're going. Da, 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 da. The first few months, he would talk to them uh, closed up in the bedroom. So I reached out to prophetess and I told her, please ask him to stop doing that. It's annoying me. If there's nothing you're hiding, stay here on the lounge and talk to them as I do my work. Mm. I'll not interfere. Mm. So he started. Now that's when I would hear, uh, yeah. you need to succeed, you know, for your next level. Uh, now that we have prayed, da, 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 da. So that's how he used to get money. And when these partners send money, when it lands into his hands, a big chunk of it goes to South Africa. To the prophetess. To the prophetess. So Kumbe, he has been given his targets by prophetess. Like you're going through, you're going to go in the next six months, God will open this huge door, you know. You need to sow a seed of this and this every other week. Now this is the life I've yes. brought myself into. Every other week, sow this and this seed. Yeah. So he receives money. Mm. God is providing mm. as faithful as he is. Mm. He's providing through these partners. But when the money comes, we are not talking about the couch. We are not talking about the, the kitchen. We are not talking about beddings and all that. Nice curtains. We are talking about prophetess. So money would come. Prophetess. Money would come. Prophetess. prophetess. And anytime I would question, he would say, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. If there is a scripture that has silenced me, lean. Is that one? Touch not. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Yes. But looking back right now, I am anointed. God. That has healed me. Yes. And God could be telling any other person, touch, touch not my hand. There you go. There, touch my anointed. Looking back, that has healed me, Lynn. Oh God, that gave me chills right now. Yeah, because and God could be saying, "It's you, Lynn. Touch you guys. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm." When she was in her mother's womb, I knew her. I consecrated her. She's changing nations through her channel. Touch not my anointed. And do her no harm. Wow. And God has healed my heart through that scripture. Through that scripture. The very scripture yes. that tore me apart. Yes. So we would receive money. Yeah. I can't question. And it continued. It continued. So it got to a point, September or November of 2012, prophetess starts saying, you, be, you guys need to come for a second honeymoon in South Africa. Start preparing your passports. 
I had a passport. Remember that singer that yes. was all over? all over? I had a passport. And him, he had a passport. Mm. I think he had been to Rwanda before. Mm. So she's like, you need to start applying for a South African visa because I want you to come for mm. a second honeymoon. Mm. And she's aware of what happened in the, in the honeymoon. Mm. That's a story for another day. So I was like, whoa, she's thinking good about us. And in that whole process, she didn't contribute anything. It was partners who contributed. Mm. So my ex used to reach out to them, like we have a target. We have a trip to South Africa. And this is the targets that we have. And there was this main partner, allow me not to mention her name because yes. she requested me. Yeah. There was this main partner, I call her partner A. She was the biggest supporter of this guy his ministry mm -hmm. she believed in him mm. and she's the one who sponsored that trip you can imagine one person giving three hundred thousand shillings clean with no strings nothing she said you guys go have fun luckily we got the visa he's the one who went to get yes. the visa i was left in the house mm. interceded like nations we are coming you know <laughs> this is it this is it and when we, uh, he called me and said we've been granted the visa i was like yeah nations you know how these things just yes. keep fueling yes. you like yeah yes. we're going somewhere so i was just that wife that <laughs> that wife that's mm. there to support so we went to south africa and the moment we landed in this house lynn i was shocked the mansion it was like if i remember it was like five bedrooms yes mansion and, and as we are spending outside in the servants quarter you can imagine such kind of a house and this is someone who is not working she's the prophet yes can i ask you yeah what nationality was this prophetess kikuyu kenyan, kenyan. yes kenyan From Moranga. What? Her husband is from Eldoret. She's from Moranga. So she's now in South Africa. She's now in South Operating Africa. Operating from there. Operating from there. Living a lavish life. Yes. After sharing my story, there's a woman who reached out to me yes. and gave me the whole story of how she took them to South Africa. They used to preach in Nakuru. So there is another story to that. Mm. So she, mansion big mansion and the husband is an accountant and she keeps saying how his job is unstable so she's the one who is financing mm. this lifestyle mm. and that shocked me like whoa the targets we keep getting the financial targets the kind of lifestyle they are supporting anyway in my head i'm like none of my business also you know we are but again for this exactly but then question mark question, question mark, mark question mark question mark question mark and while we're in south africa partner a gets a call from my ex from my prince mm. and she's told um you need to sow a seed i don't know what seed it was about by this time, at most of those phone calls now, mm. he, he's, he's mm. making sure yes. that I'm near. Yeah. I have an idea. Yes. So that conversation ended. I didn't know how, what mm. they, you know. Mm. Mine was just to enjoy my life, mm. like, like South Africa, Johannesburg. Yes. yes. And three days later, my prince calls me to the servant's quarter and tells me, I would like to let you know, partner A sent... 250,000 Kenya shillings. And I already transferred it to prophetess. And I asked him, when did she transfer the money? He said, um, I think it was the day before. And when did you transfer the money? Without asking me. Of course, it's none of my business, Lynn. But just bring me in as your wife. Let, Let me, me know. To see. Tell yeah. me what's happening. We're going far together. <laughs> <laughs> stop stop keeping me like in the dark. You know, yeah, in the dark. Let me know. Yes. So the guy goes like, I already transferred the money. It was a seed. Da, 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 da. And I asked him, don't you think we deserve to buy some shoes, you know, some a nice suit for you coming out of South Africa? You didn't even leave something kidogo for us. He's like, no, it was a seed. 
And so in my head, how this woman controls our finances continued, you know, building up in my head. And I'm like, goodness, where is my voice in this? I don't, I'm not even supposed to contribute anything. Like, just let me comment something before you, you go running, doing what she's, yes. you know? Even show me my opinion show counts, me my even opinion. if you don't agree. Exactly. And it was never there. Mm. There was nothing. The, mm -hmm. All my marriage, mm. it was prophetess. And then him, what he has decided. And in between that, he will say God. Him. Imagine God was not fast. Yes. Prophetess. And then him or mm. him and prophetess, and then, then God. God will come in first. Mm. And then when I'm told God has said, I came to interpret his prophetess has mm. given an instruction mm. that this is what we are supposed to do. Because I would, there are things I would ask, can we pray about it first? No, 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 it's done. This is it. So it was always prophetess, prophetess, prophet. And at this point, I began getting worried, Lynn, because I'm like, I'm in trouble. I don't matter in this thing. And especially that 250,000, Lynn, that was tough. That's not five shillings. It's not. That's not money that you just, you know, make it mm. pass mm. through the air mm. like it's mm. not a big mm. deal. Mm. 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 And I was like, goodness, the, my opinion truly does not count. Mm. And that's where now we started colliding slowly by slowly. My opinion, his opinion, my opinion, prophetess opinion. So prophetess opinion was always number one. His opinion and God's opinion in between there. Mm. And then mine is just, mm. it don't matter. Mm. You, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Mm. And whatever you do, just mm. don't touch the anointed. Mm. Don't touch the, the, the prophet of mm. God. Mm. So we, we started fighting. And at this point, when we came back to Kenya, and I remember we went to preach somewhere in South Africa. The husband had made a way for us mm. to go and preach somewhere. Mm. And in that place, we were given, I think, 50 rand. Which, I don't know 50 rand what that is. Mm. 500. It was 5,000 yes. Kenya shillings. Yes. And just the moment it landed into our hands, prophetess said, it's a fast food for you being in South Africa. Again, I fought. Well, yeah, for you, like a five k. Yeah, I thought I was like, when, when will it be about us? We are the ones who should decide what we do with our finances, lean, and we are the ones who should decide. We are giving this to prophetess, mm. and sometimes I told my ex, sometimes God would not even want us to give her. There is someone somewhere that could need it more than her, mm. but we are always, you know, yes. And that was a big mistake. So this 5K, we were told, fast fruit. So prophetess. And I'm like, goodness. So that some money came from partner A after that. I think it was 6,000. Mm. And that money I refused. I told him, we need to buy something. I don't have clothes. In Kenya, I didn't have clothes. I was beginning to, to you know, yes. gain weight. And I didn't have enough clothes mm. to wear. And I told him we need to buy mm. some clothes. Mm. And out of that trip, that's where now he allowed and we bought some clothes, like three pairs of jeans, yes. two dresses, yeah. which was good. I appreciated. Mm. And we came back. Coming back to Kenya, the moment we landed, a call comes through from Prophetess. Just when we got to the house, a call comes through from Prophetess. And she gives an instruction. You guys need to move. You need to move from that dirty estate. We used to live in Eastlands. You need to move from that place and find a comfortable neighborhood. People who are jobless. Find a comfortable neighborhood and you need to move there. And once you move there, I want you to keep my room for me. Keep a room for me. Because your house will be like my Kenyan Headquarter. Yes. And once you move, get me the best. You know I'm the one who is supposed to decide. Yeah, to decide where we live. Yes. Like this is where I'm comfortable. Let's work with this. This is our mm. budget, you know. And I was that 
person. I wanted us to start from somewhere. We are going far, Lynn. But let's start from somewhere. MOG, my ex is like, no, 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 no. We are going to move. We moved to the Indigwa. Wow. And the Indigwa was expensive. Imagine moving from Umoja, a house of 9,000 shillings, all the way to the Indigwa, 25,000 shillings. And you are jobless. You don't have a job. You don't even know where tomorrow's food is coming from. You just know you have partners. I came to discover later, Prophetess had found out that partner A had gotten a job of 100,000 shillings. And she had given an instruction. At this point, when after we, have, uh, we are moving, mm -hmm. we are now planning to move. Mm -hmm. She gives an instruction that my ex, my prince and all his partners should start tithing 50%. Imagine, that's now the word of God. That's what God is saying. And our Bibles are closed. Lean. You cannot even open You cannot your own even Bible open and prove and her read wrong. for yourself. Yes. You cannot prove it wrong. You rely on her interpretation. You rely on her interpretation. Of what God has commanded. Exactly. And what God wants for you. So my house became like the man of the house is prophetess, you know, and the woman of the house is Your somehow prince. my prince. I'm just that person, like the cartoon that, you know, does whatever is yes. commanded. Yeah. So she, she, she decrees that we're going to start, everyone should start tithing 50% because the place that God is taking us in the next two years, you will not believe. So we started, partner A has gotten a job, 100,000. What does she give? 50%. 50%. 50%. That's 50,000. That's 50,000. Comes into my husband's account. I even have those accounts in my head. So date. this prophetess yeah. is instructing partner A, mm -hmm. your job is to support this man of God. They're not in touch. They direct. are not in touch directly. Yes. But there is a circle here. Yes. So now you are prince yes. gets money from partner A. Yes. And now we need to start tithing 50%. 50 percent. Yes. This is a cycle. And here. when when prophetess gives an instruction, yes. man of God divulges it the to his partners. The prophetess has said. The prophetess has said. Was when did God ever say something? That's what I used to ask myself. Lean if there was a time I felt confused about God. Was that time? Was that time? I want to go to the stage where yeah. now you are moving into this posh place. Yeah. Prophetess comes. Yeah. She has a room in your house. Yeah. Your husband now starts, you know, you are starting to get fed up. Yeah. You say, I want to get out. Yeah. You successfully get out. Yeah. And what has become yeah. of you said mm. you lost mother. Mm. We want to find out, mm. have you found yeah. mother back? Yeah. So guys, I know you all going to be like, oh, Lynn, why, why, why? But we got to take a break because yeah. you know the drill. Here on the show, we do not rush our guests. And I want to come back for part two, which airs tomorrow at 10 a.m. So all you need to do is digest what has already been talked about. Tell your friends so that all of you can tune tomorrow at 10 a.m. for part two and the final part of this conversation. Don't go away. Let's continue having this discussion. I've been given instructions. Hmm. You need to get pregnant within the next six months. Otherwise, you will miss your destiny. This woman has the guts to even dictate your bedroom. You and your husband. 
six months if you don't get married mother if you don't get pregnant yeah, if you don't get pregnant sorry you may lose your destiny oh god and you will make the man of god stagger oh wow towards his destiny mm -hmm. so a child became paramount paramount i had to get pregnant you're prophesying the breakup of people because they are not doing what you want if she sees your wife and you're the guy your wife is a problem to her goals she will begin prophesying a split i saw around seven couples going through divorce and prophetess hands were involved oh god yes and i tried opening the eyes of my ex and they never opened i started saying no to so many things and at this point even in church i'm an enemy to people because you know people have been told hey, rebellion these people are told you're rebellious and people are recruited to hit back at you because you're trying to raise a voice of reason into what is going on and most people who have left churches are lonely because crowds are against them and if you listen to the story they have a point there's something they've seen that people are blinded about A warm welcome back to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, if you tuned in yesterday, no, first and foremost, please do not watch this episode if you have not watched yesterday's episode. Uh, because if you tuned in yesterday, then you know we were talking to our lovely guest, a mother who has gone through a lot in the hands of her man of God, her pastor, her husband, and the prophetess who decided to take advantage of everyone financially and this conversation is here because you asked for it i want us to start having hard conversation especially religion in africa is something else and if we don't start having this conversation we are going to lose a lot of people to people who have made this their business making sure they extort money from people simply by using the name of god and that's why this conversation is happening so let me not go any further mother we are to get to this part of mm. whether you found yourself. Mm. But before that, yeah. instructions have come. Yes. Partner A, mm. do this. Mm. Partner A, there are all those things, mm. do this. Yeah. It's time to move yes. and make a room for the prophetess. Yes. Okay. We now have moved. Mm. And I forgot to mention, yeah. there is a car that partner A had been instructed to give into my ex's life. Wow. By the time I was getting married, he had a Noah yes. that had come from partner A. Wow. So three months into the marriage, uh, we were instructed to sell this car and give it as a fast fruit. So again, half a million shillings, car sold, fast fruit. Instructions coming from? So South it is. Yes. Let me, let me ask a very stupid question because yeah. this, convert, this topic is getting to me now. Yeah. These instructions that keep you know, been given, mm. I've instructed you to give, I know I've instructed you to tell. Mm -hmm. These instructions, mm -hmm. they are to lead you where? To a great destiny. And those, most of those destinies had timelines. Like in the next six months, God is going to, to give you something so tangible. And you know, Lena, I'm, I'm a smart woman. Some of those things I, I checked. I waited. Zero. Zero. And the cycle kept going on and on. In fact, the more we gave, the more desperate we became. Oh no, but which word is this though? Exactly. Which gospel is this? Exactly. That allows you to keep giving and exactly. draining yourself and yes. leaving nothing behind for yourself. But the moment I landed in her house, yeah. I knew where all this money is going. going. Yeah, I knew. So we've now moved. Yes. She has instructed us to move. We've moved yeah. to a two-bedroom house. You're jobless, you don't have an income, you're depending on partners mm. all over the place. Mm. 
And most of my husband's work was always on phone, speaking to partners, praying for them, which is okay. Pray for people. Yeah, that's his job. That's his job. But now when it comes to finances, you hear them gi being given targets, you know, send 5,000 shillings by tomorrow, 2 p.m., you know. And so when we moved into this house, so partner A is giving 50,000 and us, we're giving 25,000 to profit taste. And how much is the rent? 25,000. So basically, we are living out of partner A's money, just paying the rent. And then these are the, let me call them small partners. Yes. They are the ones who take care of the food in the house. The clothes. You know, the clothes. And I was so confused. I didn't know, what am I bringing a child into? If I was to get a baby, I kept delaying, you know? I kept delaying. I didn't want to bring a child into this mess. And so it got to a point. So prophetess comes to our house. Now we are the HQ. She comes to our house. And anytime she comes to the house, every other Kenyan that knows her and knows that the woman of God is in Kenya, they'll flock. So in the morning, I'm up in the kitchen cooking for people with money we've asked from people. At times, my husband wakes up and says, we don't have fuel for today. Can you talk to your friends? We need to carry the woman of God around. And at this point, there is a voxy that we have from partner A. Instructions. She had given her voxy to us. So this is the car we are using to fuel and transport the woman of God wherever she's going. Mara, she's going to meet this couple wherever. There is this couple that's fighting. She needs to go and pray for them. There is a woman. He, she has a word for a woman. You know all that. Oh. Ministry. Oh. So it's mother and her husband who are sponsors. So fast. Yes. And she's so sleeping work. in your house. Yes. She's sleeping in my house. Guests are flocking in from morning, 7 a.m. There is a knock. People begin coming in. And the last one will leave at 10 p.m. Then do the dishes and everything. I have to do everything. And I was exhausted, Lynn. I was exhausted. After two of such trips, she would come for a month sometimes, sometimes two weeks. And when she goes again, we go back to that same old life. So what happened? Because God, God, God does not get mocked. Partner A gets to a point where she gets a fiancé. And this fiancé is a man of God. Ame mfungua macho. Ame mfungua macho. Ah, saka ende. And she's like, I am leaving. My time is up. I am leaving. And I was like, today she happy. Imagine that was my first fear. Like, the 25,000 she has been giving. What are we going to do? Where are we going to get such money? And so... Partner A and her Voxy, she called back her Voxy. This one came even for her Voxy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is she guy still around? Who, uh, partner A? Yes, she's no, around. No, partner A. She's ah, around. Me, I'm saying hi to you. <laughs> she's doing well. Are you guys in way. good terms now? Yes. You are? Yes. yes. Ah, me, I'm saying hi to you. So, it's, partner A lives <laughs> with her Voxy. There's a time she called me and we laughed. She made my day. She told uh. me. Do you remember how I was told, like, um, there's a big man of God in Nigeria. Yeah. So there is somehow, she used to be told to give seeds so that she will go see this man of God in Nigeria and he will speak a word in her life. And her life will never be the same again. So, but Nae would be told, give 50,000 shillings. Umebakisha watu wawili. We in Nigeria. So one time she calls me and says, Umebakisha <laughs> So that, that was, looking back, that was funny. Yeah. Like, how do you give money so that you go to Nigeria to see someone? And now she's been taken away from our lives. And I was scared, Lynn. At this point, I'm pregnant. I've been given instructions. You need to get pregnant within the next six months. Otherwise, you will miss your destiny. This woman has the guts to even dictate your bedroom, you and your husband. Six months, if you don't get married, mother, 
if you don't get pregnant. If you don't get pregnant, sorry, you may lose your destiny. Oh God. And you will make the man of God stagger oh, wow. towards his destiny. Mm -hmm. So a child became paramount, paramount. I had to get pregnant. And I'm this kind of a person. I would not want to be in your way. If God wants you to go this way, and I can hold your hand to end the evil. I'm not blocking you. I'm not blocking you. That's just who I am. I, mm. I will not want. Mm. I wish you the best. Let's go. Mm. And so in this case, I say, this man of God, we are going far. I believe that word is still valid. Let's go. Let's get a child. So at this point, he's told to go to, for prayer, 40 days of prayer in South Africa. That's what he told me. So he gets an air ticket, goes. I don't know what that was about because I can pray in the bathroom and God can hear me. But telling me you're going for 40 days of prayer and he's a partner that's sponsoring that, it didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Whatever. You cool. know, I kept doing this yes. to so many things. And when he came back, I conceived. And now that's the time uh, I told Prophetess, I'm pregnant. She was so happy. You know what's up if it's genuine ha 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 what what what, what 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 all those emojis and i was like yeah she's happy i can't wait to get home to tell my husband when i got home Julie, by the way i have something to tell you i'm pregnant and he was on his phone okay it was not a big deal to him and i told god i will love this child looks like this is my responsibility. And whatever seasons are lying ahead of us, oh, yes. because I can sense something is not right, mm. but we will make it with my child. Again, prophetess comes. Imagine filling the house with people and all that, and we barely have food to eat. At times, she comes, gets my husband. Every morning, they just leave, and I'm pregnant. They just leave and go, yeah, you go, minister. And I'm left with nothing in the house. I've fed the guests, they've gone, I don't have food. And I kept praying for my child. I told God, if you don't carry us through, I don't have anyone. My pregnancy continued by the grace of God. Very healthy pregnancy. No complications to which I give God all the glory because we didn't even have money for the hospital. I went, activated my NHIF, thank you government of Kenya, activated my NHIF and it's what took care of the birth of my child. Thank God nothing came up mm. and that bill was sorted. Mm. So this cycle continues and now by the time I'm giving birth, partner A is out, support is out, the car is gone and at this point prophetess is not coming back to our house. You hear she has come back there in Ngong Road in an apartment. That's where we go to see them. Now you see, we, we've not paid rent. You know, there's is, there is so many problems. And that's where I asked my ex, if this woman is up to good with us, this is the point we should have seen her presence. With all the monies and finances we have funded her ministry, this is the point she's supposed to rise and be the mother she is and walk with us. But when partner A left, prophetess left, they would come with her family and you'd hear an apartment has been paid mm. and all that mm. and we go whatever. Mm. So at this point, rent is a problem. I have a young child. I don't know what to do. Rent is a problem. So fast forward, I go to a point and I said, this man we are going far. And I have an acre of land back home. And I told him, you see that land I keep talking about that dad said is mine? I think we're going to sell it because I want to support you. At this point, Lynn, rent is piling up. 25K is not something small. You see that we have four months unpaid, you know? Some partner somewhere, uh, the, the, these small, small partners, he would try gather money from them. It's not, so you see, areas keep building, keep building. And I'm like, 
if I'm truly a supportive wife, this is what I'm supposed to do. At his low moment, let me try and do something. And so we came up with a plan. On this, I don't blame him. Yes. It was tulikuwa pamoja. Okay. And I told him, we're going to talk to dad. And we're going to tell him, I'll sell that piece of land. And once I sell it, we are buying another piece of land near Nairobi. You see, home is Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Near Nairobi. And once we do that, we will farm from close by. Nampango ilikuwa kulipa rent. Kai. Looked for a buyer through my sister and my brothers. Luckily, we found a buyer. After finding a buyer, and I'm the, when they are finding the buyer for me, they have no idea what I'm about to do with that money. Sold my piece of land, 500,000 shillings. And I told my prince, don't mention to the prophetess about this. About this. This is me as your wife supporting you. And if this goes, I don't have anything else I can do for you. This is the point I want to help you. Please don't share. Imagine he did. Mm -hmm. By the time I sold the land, an instruction, if there is a word I hate to date, instructions, an instruction came. So a tithe of 20%, half a million, 20%. Guy. That's 100,000. 100K. Gone. The next thing she says, I have problems with my passport and I need 30,000 shillings. And this one I'll refund. Let's just say, prophetess, my 30K, I'm still waiting. <laughs> it was never refunded. <laughs> wow. It pains me. Yeah. Then the next thing, um, some, I think 150K, a seed destiny or something like that. So that's it. By the end of all that drama, I think we were left with 180,000 shillings. At this point, my child has no clothes. Do you know by the time I was giving birth, it's a friend of mine who called me to her house and gave me girl's clothes. Her, her, her child was a girl. And your child is a boy. And my child is a boy. And this girl tells me, you know rompers, those ones that have to me go. Anybody can wear them. So I went back to so many of them. The girl was like a year old at this point. So you see, my child has no clothes. So badala kwenda kununua shamba. You want to dress your child first, you know? Should not have been a priority. But as a mother, that's what I was beating in my heart at that point. Because there are people who criticize me like, shouldn't you have invested? But surely as a mother, I wanted to dress the shame of my son at that point. So that's what I did. I bought him clothes and then paid rent. My arrears cleared, cleared. And that's how my land money. And within four months, lean, we were being kicked out of the house. And something else I did, I bought furniture. At, oh my God, I have so much. <laughs> At one point, when we got married, he, he, got, he bought furniture, mm -hmm. some furniture worth 15,000 mm -hmm. through the through partner A mm -hmm. uh, like after like one and a half months. Mm -hmm. So one point came where he said God has instructed him to give away all the furniture in the house to a certain son in the ministry. And this son, I, I don't recall if he had done anything or it was just God saying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God needs to tell me some of these things. Why doesn't he talk to me, you know, as a woman of the house? So by the time I'm selling my land, we've stayed in an empty house for nine months. Because instructions came. Because instructions came. And these instructions had a timeline. Like within three months, you will see what God will do. Wow. Imagine nine months later, I said, God, you didn't do your part of three months. I think I'll do it. And I bought furniture with my land money. I filled the house with furniture. And this furniture was chosen by prophetess. This is the kind of furniture I want, you know, blah, blah, blah. That was before partner A is gone. So by the time partner A is gone, we have furniture. We're okay. We've, we've done that. And then I've sold the land and we've paid some of the areas. Four months, we were kicked out. 
So fast forward, after these four months we're kicked out, and this woman is nowhere to be found. And I asked my husband, what is she saying? What, what is God saying? You know, you know you've, you're so used to God speaking. What is God saying about this? Nothing. So we are kicked out and we're given four hours to vacate. Vacate is the word? Yes. Yeah, four hours. When we moved, we went to Kasarani. She got to know we've gone to Kasarani. And it's a bishop who helped us. He spoke to one of his washirika and told them, host these people for me. This is my daughter. This is a man of God who had worked with me in music ministry. Before you met this. Before I met this guy. Okay. So I introduced them and at this point they are now in touch. Mm -hmm. So he's like, help this couple. So he gets us a two bedroom, imagine, and says, stay there until you heal. Do you know what conversation mm -hmm. my husband and prophetess are having? That this bishop wants you to be his son. Get out. I was like, goodness. So we've moved from Tendegua to Kasarani. And within a week, we are given instructions. Go back to Tendegua. That's where you belong. And you're living in a house you've been given. You see how messy it can become. This person is controlling everything that concerns you. To a point, you, you, you're like zombies. You don't even know what you want in life anymore. You've been helped lean. This person wants you to heal. Stay there until you heal. You're not paying rent. You're not paying rent. And now you need to move from and there. And now you need to move from there because he has an agenda. He wants to have you as his children. That's her fear. That's now her go back to Tindigua. Go back to Tindigua. Please tell me you did not go back. We did. Kai. We did. We moved back. My husband was borrowing. Borrowing people in order for us to move. Within, I think, 10 days, we didn't do two weeks in that house, that free house. We moved back to another place in the Degua. At this point, another partner in church is given instructions. You're the one who's supposed to pay rent for the next one year, and God will take you places. You will go far. Do you know Lynn, that guy paid our rent for six months, Akashindwa? And I cried for his heart. And I told God, don't allow him to be bitter. Because by the time he was starting to pay our rent, he was good. By the time he was stopping, he was bitter. He was bitter. And he was not doing okay financially. Christ. Imagine you wonder, Kwani is God. He's, he's giving timelines, but people are getting more desperate. People are getting more desperate. If they try to come in and, and those instructions, it's not going anywhere. Even in, my, in myself, I can't see anything. Like these destinies we've been given for all these years, in the next six months, it's getting worse. And at this point, I was like, I forgot to say, when I got married, I was asked to keep off from my family. Like, don't, don't get in touch with your family. You come from a very promiscuous family. I don't know where that came from. Separate yourself. They are sinners. That was from prophetess to me. So I had not been in touch. You see all this drama. I had not been really in touch with, with, my, with my family. And at this point, I started saying, God, my sister was right. But because if I share with her, she will go telling everybody to, to confirm that she was right. I'll start with my dad. So at this point, I reached out to my father and my dad started talking to me. When I shared, I, I was like uh, a radio, you know, a tape, a tape recording. Was this the first time you were connecting to your yes. dad about this? Yes, yes. And I... I poured my heart out. We spoke for like two hours. I poured my heart out to him. And he says, oh my God, this is a Jezebel spirit. He spoke to himself like that, but I had. And he's like, my daughter, it's time to fight. He asked me, how is your spirit? Are you ready to fight? I want you to fight for yourself. You're coming out of this, this place. He was not for the idea of get out of your marriage. He was like, rise up from this place, rise up. And my father started inputting um, strength 
and the word of God, speaking the word of God to me. And by this time, I'm so scared. I'm like, touch not my anointed. How am I going to do this? Do my prophets no harm? So I started getting courage to start fighting. So from this point, if instructions came that were not scriptural, yes. I would fight back. And what he would do, as always, he would tell her. So I became an enemy yeah. to both my husband and the prophetess. And the prophetess. So it was so hard. When someone sees that you're rebelling what they're trying to enforce on you, they begin to punish you indirectly. And you will be so scared. And this is what has held so many people in abusive situations, religious abuse. You're fed with this fear that you do not know. Like you feel like the moment you, you just pull your leg out of it, you're dead. It's like lightning will come it's and like just strike you and you will die immediately. Yes. And I started relying on my dad's strength mm. because I didn't know how to pray. Yes. At this point, the thought of God was so confusing in my heart. Because I want to ask, yeah, what's the difference beco- be- between how your dad mm-hmm. spoke about the word mm-hmm. and this word mm-hmm. that you are being given by these people? My dad's word had no strings. Mm-hmm. It had no strings and it was life. What this woman would, would tell us is that, you see, partner A, in the next six months, watch her life. You know, watch her life and you will see how she will fall. You see that fear? Mm. In my dad, there was life. He was calling life out of it. But this other side was calling doom, mm. doom. and death and destruction. Mm. So most people are scared of getting out of that because fear is fed into them Mm -hmm. and they feel like God hates me. It's like people are made to think that God is this old man with a stick. The moment you say no to something, he will hit you. But we serve a very loving God. We are his image. We are his image. Look inside you. Yes. That's, That's you. Exactly. My dad used to tell me, how many times do you cry at night? And I told him, every day, I, sl- I sleep crying, Dad. And he was like, do you know God is crying as you cry, Mother? Do you know God is crying as you cry? See yourself in that. He raised the value I, s- I have in God that had been so destroyed. Remember, my voice was nothing. My dad made me remember the value that I carry. Mm. And this carried me. I started saying no to so many things. And at this point, even in church, I'm an enemy to people. Because, you know, people have been told, hey, rebellion. These people are told, you're rebellious. And people are recruited. Do you know that is narcissistic abuse? People are recruited to hit back at you. Because you're trying to raise a voice of reason into what is going on. And most people who have left churches are lonely because crowds are against them. And if you listen to the story, they have a point. There's something they've seen that people are blinded about. So I become an enemy. At this point, Lynn, I'm getting sick. Ulcers started attacking me. And I would, there are times I would get home i'm on the floor and he will not take me to hospital that's how bad it was sometimes at my own needs i'm the one who is meeting them paying bills in the house at at one point he's just like he doesn't care about it and i know it's not him it's the kind of information that he's getting Like, Mm. this girl is against you. So what happened? At one point, I said, I'll need to know what these people talk about. Now that I'm rebelling, Mm. I want to know what they say. Sini rebel kabisa. Sini rebel kabisa. I want to know what they say. And at this point, my dad is lifting me Mm. into boldness, lean, and courage. Like, that courage has carried me to where I am today. Good. So... 
one point this guy is showering you know he was people say don't touch your husband's phone you know you if you see women talking about that you'll be like whoa mm-hmm. and that's what saved me mm. touching his phone yes <laughs> <laughs> yes because uh-huh. i said i want to know prophetess what do you tell my husband when you come to me you you are like yeah thank you for the tithe you know thank you you're very sweet and then the the reactions i'm getting from this man he's not alone you guys are together i want to know what you are after one time when he was in the bathroom i took his phone searched her name went direct to her chats searched my name again in those chats <laughs> it was such a fast thing and it highlighted every other thing that has my name and i read all of them i was shocked lin this woman was telling my husband that girl is out to destroy you your best couple she was our best couple this girl is out to destroy you oh. you will go nowhere as long as you're with martha you will go nowhere in life those are the two things that crushed me and i had him finishing the shower i locked exited locked his phone and left it put it back on the charging and i cried i cried from that day i never stepped into his church and that was 4 months before i walked out of that marriage so i cried and cried and then it came to a point i don't remember if it was 2 weeks or a yes. month later i confronted them i wrote to her and i told her i have discovered what you tell my husband how can you tell him that he's not going anywhere with me how can you tell him that i'm out to destroy him and then you come laugh at me and you then you with come, me you come laugh at me and encourage me What kind of mother are you? Those are the questions I asked her. From that day I got blocked. That was 4 months before I walked out. So prophetess cannot uh, fight back. She cannot reply. She cannot, yeah. So she blocks. She blocks. Okay? So I confronted. Let's go on. And then she she and him that day they slept at 3 a.m. chatting. Mm. They were both online. So I knew he has been told. Mm. So 4 months later through my dad's prayer through my dad's encouragement wow. through my dad's you know calling me forth i told him one time when i was coming from work at this point i found work yeah. i was not supposed to look for work so my rebelling i looked for work and by the grace of god i got a job wow so at this point i have a, i have the job one time i'm coming from work and i got attacked at our gate is like 10 steps from the main gate two guys followed me and i don't know if he had a gun or a knife i leave that to that but there is something you wanted to take out of his pocket and attack me if i didn't give him my belongings so i threw the bag to him and started screaming they had a motorbike they were running they were yes. riding away yes. i ran after them screaming screaming so at this point through my house girl's number. Oh, you had a house girl. Yes, now. yes. And it's my dad who is paying this house girl oh. at this point. Mm. So I called my dad. I told him I've been attacked. And the fear I felt in his voice, he was shaking. He told me, "My daughter, we are fighting this. We are fighting this." I love your dad. And imagine there is not one point he told me, "Get out of that marriage." But the second day after I'm done with replacing my ID, you know, NHIF, all those cards I had lost, I called him after I had got a mm. kabambe. Mm. I called him and told him that I feel like I've reached the end. And I was so fearful because I didn't know what he would say. I feel like this marriage has drained me to the end. I cannot move on. Do you know what my dad told me? I've been waiting for those words. for the last 3 or 4 years have been waiting and i could not have told you it had to come from you because there are people who go through abuse they keep crying to people like what should i do what should i do but there are people who are quiet because you have to get to that point where you are done by yourself by yourself nobody can get you out and that's why you see people walk out of marriages and go back they were not done But I had gotten to that place where I was done. I felt like I'd lost 
everything. Are you oh, even damn. telling your husband you've been robbed, his reaction? What is he saying? That day, I called him through a neighbor. Yeah. I gave a neighbor his number. Yeah. And this neighbor had witnessed the crime as it was happening. And when this guy called him, he said, Nikodhika na hubiri na nitakuja baadae. So now you are like telling your dad, this is it. Yes. And it's that, those words, those words made me feel useless in his eyes. I felt useless in his life. Kama ni meibiwa. Na unasema ukodhika unahubiri. Keep preaching the word. And because I know what they've been talking like, you won't go anywhere as long as this woman is in your life. Mm. You see? Mm. So I was like, this is it, I'm done. So my dad says, what's your plan? What do you want from here? I told him I want to go out. I want, I want to leave, I want to leave. And he said, on Saturday, go look for a house. I'll pay for you for three months. Is this what you want? I told him, yeah, this is what I want. Three months, my dad paid my house. And with all the arrears in this house, when I told my ex that I'm, I'm going to leave, allow me to leave to safety. I didn't tell him I have plans to exit. I told him, allow me to leave to safety. Give me at least one couch. Remember, <laughs> so I didn't have to ask. But because of the respect, I said, give me just one. I need to move to safety. Do you know what he told me? You clear the arrears first if you're to move. You need to pay the arrears. He's not begging you to stay. No. Clear the house arrears first if you're supposed to move. And I was like, goodness. I'm, it's not my job. Anytime I've done it is to help you. It's not my job to do that. And in my heart, I told God, I'm done. Let me lose everything. But I've not lost myself. I've not lost my life. I think stuff can be gotten later. And that's how I walked out of that marriage. And the day I told him, we, we are leaving on Saturday. He thought we were going to Nakuru for Christmas. It was 21st or 22nd. Mm. And in my head, at, at this point, dad has already paid the house for me, a deposit somewhere. So I only left with a backpack and my child. And that's how we moved and when to begin life. How yeah. did that feel like walking out? <laughs> I felt like I had lost everything, everything. As I was going to the stage, I looked at the sacrifices I had made. The first sacrifice, losing my family, losing my dreams. Yeah. Losing, I looked at how happy I was mm -hmm. when I met these people. I was fulfilled mm -hmm. serving God. But at this point, thank you. I've literally lost everything. I looked at my son. Having grown up without a father, it was not my choice for my son to go through the same without a present father. Mm. I had always told God, I will build a good family. My children will never be fatherless. fatherless. They will not grow with absent fathers. And so as I'm walking with him, I'm like, God. this is the beginning for you being with an absent father. But God encouraged my heart like, I raised you, Martha. I can raise this one also. And uh, the fact that I was alive and that even, you know, that mugging, you know, bad things happen in mugging. And the fact that I was alive, I was not hurt. You could have lost your life. Yeah. 
because this touching my anointed yes. someone would really have rejoiced mm. if i got hurt in yeah. that they would have used that they as would a have used lesson that. yes you see what happened yes. to her she touched the anointed exactly what did you see happening to her exactly Dear Lord. and i told god because you've protected me from that i'll hide myself in you and the fact that i have a job i will work so hard and with time, I'll recover. Yeah. Let me just say, four years later, I have not recovered what I lost. Oh. I've not recovered. I'm, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. And that is something I thank God for every day. <laughs> and sometimes, even with, you know, as a single mother, even with the rent, all these bills, there are still times you get to a place. Mm -hmm. You don't even have enough food, you know, but you keep sacrificing for the sake of the child. And by the grace of God, God has used my dad so much. We don't talk for weeks. Like we can take three weeks. He's praying for us. And the moment we get in touch, mm -hmm. do you have food for the next one month, you know? Like, what do you need? Just just for food. Forget about everything. Just for food. So I thank God. Mm. So when COVID came, we are just locked down. I can't go to Nakuru. I received divorce papers. He had gone to court and he had filed a divorce. And in that divorce paper, I read it. I was like, you stay here. Divorce petition and I'm here. Who is this person that is being accused? I was accused of adultery. I slept with men known and unknown during the marriage. And I'm like, goodness. Number two, I was um, cruel, cruelty. I had, uh, I was cruel to him. And I asked God, who is this woman that's being spoken about here? Anyway, long story short, I fought back. Thank you. The person he had sent, the court server, came to tell me that I needed to accept the accusations so that the case can end in three months. And I'm like, I am not, I'm not in a hurry. Three months for what? And then I'm not saying yes to something I am not. This has to go on record. I'm to something, something I, am I am not, not. yes and that is what led me to fight lynn i had to take a loan to get a lawyer to fight back he just wanted me to sign and say acknowledge yes. so that the process goes through and i said i've never slept with a man apart from you what are you talking about if there is anything that led me to want to fight is that one because I knew in my heart, I was not unfaithful. Known and unknown. Known and unknown. So who are these known? I don't know. Prove it. Yes, prove it. So I fought back, went to court. And when I did the response, the guy never showed up in court. He never showed up. So the last time the lawyer tells me now that these people have been delaying us, we're going to book a date. Imagine in 2022, since 2020, it's just a delay, a delay. 2022. The lawyer now books a, books a day and the, the, the divorce was granted because wow. you're supposed to have been separated three years. Yes. That is enough ground yes. for it to end. And so I told God, it's okay. Yeah. The court has a record mm. that I fought back. Yeah. And in my heart, your conscience will fight you for the rest of your life for the accusations mm. that you made. Mm. And you forgot the sacrifices how I left everything. Men should appreciate women who accept a proposal. This woman has said, whatever I was, with whoever I was, goodbye to that. And for now, let's join together and move on. And if that was not anything to you, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. So I fought back and that's how the case ended. So we were granted divorce on the final paper. It's called the decree absolute. Mm. Mm. It was granted on the last week of September. And you know, on 2nd or 1st October, he had a wedding. His. Yeah. 
so well, the divorce. Uh -uh. I want to do my maths. The last paper was in September. Yeah, the end of September. And so we always go to September, October. The first week of October. Yes, the he, first Saturday of October. He was wedding someone else. Yes. Yes, Lynn. I was relieved that he is out of my way. Yeah. But the insensitivity was real. Like, have you ever felt trashed? That's, that's, those are the thoughts that came back to me. Like, you even, that's why you wanted it to end in three months. Because you, you were doing stuff. You were busy. And I can't blame you because we were separated. But you're accusing me of things that you could be the very person doing them. Doing them. Mm. And your child, do you share <sighs> the custody? Can you imagine the time I'm finding out that he's getting married next week? on Saturday, he's with my child. And it's someone who calls me and tells me, do you know there's a wedding going on and your ex is getting married? And do you know the child is getting exposed to very negative information? Can you get your child back? Imagine I'd given him the child to, for him to have the boy for a week. I've been very generous, by the way. I didn't want our battles to go to the, that. Child. Yeah, I didn't want. Mm. On that, I asked God for special maturity because the bitterness was real. But those who know my child and his father, they know they've been together. And I told God, give me special grace for this because I don't want this boy to fight battles that don't belong to him. So by the time I'm finding out, he was with the boy. And I told him, I want the child back tomorrow. There's no way you're planning a wedding and you didn't tell me. And he's like, who said that I owe you an explanation of anything I do? I said, yeah, you are right. But the child is involved here. You cannot be planning a wedding running around. Sir, you cannot do that. When a child is with you, you could have told me. I would have given you six, one year. You know, settle down with your new family and leave my child out of this. And that's how I got the child back. And from that time, Lynn, I haven't had the grace to let the boy go. So it's been, it's been a season of looking for Martha. Trying to find, where did I lose her? Especially on my relationship with God. Let's go there. That was affected. When you have someone you look up to in the things of God and they mishandle you, you feel like it's God who has mishandled you. Wow. God is so misrepresented in the church. Prophetess would call someone to our house and prophesy over them. The moment they leave, she would start speaking ill of them. Lean you wonder. What kind of God is this? At one point he's speaking good of me. The other point is he's against me, you know? Because that's all the picture I had. Mm. Prophetess would come to Kenya to, to people's marriages, wedding days. And by the time we're leaving that wedding in the evening, the woman has the guts to say those two are not meant to be together. And six months down the line, is a victim. You come join, you come make sure they're getting married, follow up on their wedding. Once they get married, imagine you begin prophesying their breakup. They're not meant to be together. And this prophecy, you're prophesying the breakup of people because they're not doing what you want. If she sees your wife and you're the guy, your wife is a problem to her goals, she will begin prophesying a split. I saw around seven couples going through divorce and prophetess hands were involved. Oh God. Yes. 
and I tried opening the eyes of my ex and they never opened. So now they are still together? I don't know. I cannot really tell. Yes. I'd be lying because yeah. I was blocked at that point and I chose to mind my business. I chose to heal, to go and look for myself. I love that. And I said, you guys, you do you, whatever you are up to, continue. Yes. This is my life mm. and this is my child looking mm. up to me. And if I don't style up right now, mm. my child has no future mm. because now this is me. And I thank God that he has given me the grace to just continue doing everything I can to get to that place where nobody else matters. It's just me and God. How are you guys? <sighs> we are okay. But the, the child, the child still has questions because the father loves him. I cannot come here and lie that, oh, they, he mistreats the boy. No, he, no, doesn't. I, he doesn't. He doesn't. So the boy does not understand if dad really loves me. How old is he now? He's now eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't understand. Like, like the other day he was doing homework and there was a question, who is the head of your family? And he came to my room and he's like, mom, what should I write here? Who is the head of my family? Should I say mother or father? I told him, write both, mother and father. Mm. And he's like, no, 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 no. You need to answer this question. Mm. So you can tell the guy is, he, the young man is wondering, you know, but I'm in that place of sending God to that heart. Yes. Like come through. Yeah. The way you did for me, come through come through to this boy mm -hmm. and reach out to him at a level that he will understand. Mm -hmm. And as time goes by, when the questions continue, I'll begin answering slowly by slowly. Yes. Because I would not want him to be bitter yeah. with his father. Yeah. Lynn, if there is a battle I have chosen, I say, this is between me and you. The child, he will not be involved. Mm -hmm. If he wants to come and visit you, let yeah. him do that. Yeah. But he will not fight my battles yeah. with the father. Yeah. So we are in that place of one day at a time, trusting God. I thank God the job I found that time, I'm still there. Oh, really? Yes. Good job. Yeah. May you grow. Yeah. Yeah. May and you I grow. really thank God. There's a question I know my audience are struggling with. Yeah. You say your prince was a pastor. Yes. So... Does he have a church or he's just a pastor walking around he has with the a title? Church. Mm. He has a church. Mm. He has a church and it, people used to ask me, so did he close the church now that you guys went separate? Lynn, it continued like I was dead. Nothing stopped. Of course. Imagine losing your life for that. And when you walk out, everything is going on like you like didn't you never, exist. Like you were never there. Yeah. And that's why I tell you, man, choose yourself. Choose you. Over and over and, and over, over again. again. Over again. Choose yourself. Because one of the battles I fought in my heart, what will the washirika do when I leave? Do you know by the time you're walking out of a marriage, you've, you, you've left seven times? Yes. Yes. Six, seven times yes. in your Emotionally, head. Emotionally, you are gone. You're gone. You're gone mentally. You're Ulisha gone toka. mentally. Ulisha enda mm. kabisa. Mm. And by the time you want to take this physical step, so many questions hold you back. Mm. What will the washirika do? Yes. What will they say? Yes. Will they get hurt? Mm. Will their faith be shaken? Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. In fact, when I left, I used to meet people who used to call me, Mom! I used to meet them in town. And someone wants to spit on you. This is one year, close to one year after I left. And I usually tell wow. women, if you would know, you're losing yourself. And once you're gone, that's it. That's it. Your story will not even be relevant to anybody. Choose yourself. Mm. Choose yourself. Yeah. I may not be where I want to be, Lynn. But I thank God. I'm not where I used to Amen. be. Ulcers is a gone case. Amen. I don't struggle with ulcers anymore because I have the peace of God. The peace, you know, peace mm. that passes human yes. understanding. Yes. You don't even understand it mm. yourself. Mm. That is what I have been writing on. Yeah. And I am grateful.
How are you and God? <sighs> we are working <laughs> together. <laughs> we are working together because I've gone through a lot of rejection. You know, as a gospel artist, you know how you get invited this and that place. Yes. I can tell you, Lynn, for the last three or four years, I've not been invited to sing anywhere. Because people, that divorcee, you know? Stop right here. So many thousands of people will watch this show. Yeah. They won't see a divorcee. Yeah. They won't see a single mom. Yeah. They will see Martha. Yeah. Who God gave a, gave a gift. Yeah. And whose voice, whose yeah. voice will never be forgotten. Shake our audience. Yeah. I've never asked anyone to do this on the show. Mm -hmm. Bless them with a song. Okay. Until you stop, mm -hmm. that's when I'll talk. Okay. Bless them. Do not wait to be invited anywhere. Yeah. Today you are speaking to thousands of people yeah. whose hearts you can still bless with your art. Yeah. Bless them. Take it away. We don't have to wait for years. We don't have to wait for 10 years for you to be invited in a stage with people. These are people watching. Yeah. That which you've kept. The one day when I make it to the stage again, I, I want you to know. You don't know their faces. Mm. But they are vouching for you. Yeah. And no one can take. You know, I tell people when God gives you a gift, he will take care of it. True. God will take care of your gift even without you being invited anywhere. Martha, yeah. as you find yourself, take it away. Thank you. Na kuliko walinzi wango javyo asubuhi nafsi yangu ya kungoja Na kuliko walinzi wango javyo asubuhi nafsi yangu ya kungoja wale wote wango jao bwana watafanywa upya Kubu zao maishani Wale wote yes. Wango jao bwana Watafanywa upia Kubu zao maishani Na Kuliko walinzi wango javyo asubuhi nafsi yangu yes yakungoja yes na kuliko walinzi yes wango javyo Asubuhi Nafsi yangu ya kungoja Amen Amen That's who you are That is who <sighs> Yeah That is who you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget that. Yeah. You know who you are before someone told you who you could be. Mm. I, I like going back to my innocent years when I would sit like this in a chair and practice with my dolls. Yeah. And I look back <laughs> and I'm like, people can see it now. Mm -hmm. Now it's happening. Yeah. But you sang to God and for God. 
before you are told who you are. Yeah. Don't let them put labels on you. Mm. Don't let them put labels on you. Look at you. Gorgeous yeah. and free. Yeah. You are free. All right? Yeah. You are same a concert ni lini. Uone sisi watu wa Elenen tukikuja. Yeah. Hata kama tutalipa so 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 1500 kuingia. Yeah. We will come. Yeah. Just tell us when. Yeah. Where we can even do it here. Yeah. I can tell my people to come and they can even come and we can do it here. Yeah. You get it. Thank you. Yeah. Actually I think maybe we need to do that. Yeah. Maybe you just need to do an entire mini performance for people. Yeah. Right? Yes. And I will let them know when you are ready. Okay. Don't wait for them to call you. Yeah. Go out there. Yeah. And do what you are supposed to do, right? Yes. Yeah. No, you've not spoken to yourself for a long time. <sighs> no. And you know, one day I had my guest here and I told her, look at yourself in this mirror and talk to yourself. Assume there is a mirror in front of you. What would you like to say to yourself? Dear mother. Dear mother. Mm. You're stronger than you think. Yes. The fact that um, you've not given up on yourself when everything yes. wanted you to do that. You're stronger than you think. And you know who you are yeah. inside. You've just been having so much coming at you. Mm. But who you are has not changed. And the timing is right. The timing is right. For who you are to come out. Especially your talents and gifts. God. And the true mother. The timing is right. Yes. The timing is right. And your yeah. name is Mother. Yes. All right? Yeah. That name holds so much. Yeah. Your name is Mother. Your yeah. beautiful boy will watch this one day. Yeah. What do you want him to know? Oh, my son. You've kept me going. If I was alone, I think I would have given up. My son, you've kept me going. Yeah. You've given me a reason to work hard. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about your tomorrow makes me want to keep going. The hugs and kisses that you give me every day give me the reason to want to make you happy. Amen. I've been through a lot. You've also been through a lot. Equally. Because yeah. when I didn't have food, you didn't have food. When I didn't have clothes to wear, you didn't have clothes to wear. And I appreciate that you're my son. Yes. Because you've given me a reason. Amen. To continue living. Amen. And uh, never hate your father because this was about me and him. Amen. It was not about you and him. Yeah. And uh, because he loves you, <laughs> feel free. Yes. And uh, you've made me want to leave. And I thank God. Yes. Yeah. Keep pushing. I thank God for the tough times. Mm. I thank God for 
everything we lost because it's not life that we lost yeah. it's just things that we can get good so the fact that we have life yeah. we are not limited and god is not done with us good and he's not he's not done with us okay. if god would ask people who should live and who should not mm. i think would be gone but god does not ask people who he to does bless. not ask for instructions he does not ask for instructions he does not um he does not look at people's opinion of you in order for you to to have life mm. because he is god yes he's not a respecter of persons mm -hmm. otherwise men of god would be living in this world and people who are not men of god yeah. would we be nothing we will be gone would be gone mm. but because god is not a respecter pector of persons good we are here today we are here Cindy yeah so many people <sighs> are caught up in this you no know, religion this whole brainwashing this whole mess yeah this whole mess and yeah. you know me always in my show I will say the truth yeah. you know sometimes I get messages from people Lynn you're not scared mm -hmm. I am like Who told you I am scared? Yeah. Me, I want them to quote me even when I'm not in this world yeah. anymore. Yeah. I am not scared. Mm -hmm. I know who is within me. Yeah. I am not scared. Yeah. And this conversation is something people don't touch. They don't because this is someone's unga. Yeah. Hii ni pesa ya mtu unaanza kuchanua watu. Exactly. But so many people are caught in this entangled in this mm -hmm. whole mess. Yeah. Because this is not the word of God. It is not the word of and God. And I will go back and tell people, interpret the word of God for yes. yourself. Yes. Yes. Just as I said, mm. John 3.16. Yeah. So easy for us to master. Yeah. There is no complicated grammar in the Bible. Yeah. If anything, revised versions. Yeah. Simpler languages, translations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People need to be able to to interpret this word for themselves. Yeah. Now you've been there. Yeah. You've seen the emotional damage. Oh It God. can cause someone because this is the form of abuse no one wants to talk about. Yeah. Religious abuse. Yeah. Oh men of God. Oh my mom today my dad. Oh mom, dad, mom, dad. No one wants to talk about these things. Yeah. But you've lived it. Yeah. You said if this is what you had to go through so that one person can learn can learn mm -hmm. please talk to those people who are in this mess right now yeah and maybe unfortunately some of them mm -hmm. will never come out mm -hmm. <sighs> you're being abused you're being used and misused and you don't want to acknowledge it and you will only realize the damage if God would give you an opportunity to see what is in the heart of those people that you adore. God is jealous. And as long as his glory in your life is going to someone else, you're going nowhere. You will give what you want to give. You will keep obeying instructions. But God is out there looking out and wondering when will this child of mine know that i am the ultimate yes when will this child of mine open their bibles people are going to nigeria zimbabwe to hear the word of god to hear god and their bible is closed it's the only book whose author is present as you read it mm. just open it and you will get all that an air ticket will not give you the money you are losing yeah. in all this drama 
is not worth it if you only get to know what is he saying. Prophecy is good, Lynn, but a prophet will, should come to confirm what you know. If someone comes to tell you something and it is strange to you, they are coming after you. And the more it sounds strange, the more you will yield in order to understand what it is that they are trying to say. Mm -hmm. But when you already know, for the next six months, God wants me to study his word daily, to pray daily, so that he will release what he has for me. That's that simple and clear. But people don't want to do that. People want to go and hear these strange things out there. And God is just in this closed Bible. Yeah. So don't run all over. But the damage that you're taking yourself through yeah. by yielding to things you have no idea and God is out there just wondering, when will my child come back? And that is an unfortunate place. People who are walking with God, they are so alone, but so contented. I'm in that place right now. Like, it doesn't matter. I have the creator of the universe. Yes. Like, it's me and him. Yes. He knows, mm -hmm. and he's involved, mm -hmm. and he's aware. And that is security enough. Other than you going to buy a broom, mm -hmm. you buy a broom, you place it in your house. It's like you adore that broom more than, you know, what you're supposed to do. You adore that broom more than just opening scripture and reading and hearing what God has. So people are doing all manners of idolatry. You're doing idol worship and your Bible is closed. If the church can come to a place I can only speak for Christianity because I'm one. If the church can come to a place where if you want to hear God, open your Bible, it's enough. And when you go to church, if your pastor hears God, he will confirm what God told you in the morning. Yes, He will. Mm. And you won't be lost. Mm -hmm. And that way you become a team mm. with God. Mm. Because he knows, he has the yes. blueprint of your life. Yeah. He knows five years to come what he wants for you. Mm. And he'll continue to unfold it into you as you seek him. But people don't want to go that mm -hmm. route. They want these cheap things, cheap things. And the moment you engage the first time, yeah. you keep going. Mm. And it's a cycle you may not be able to break. Mm. And my heart aches for the Magu family because I believe maybe, just maybe he got to a place he felt. Getting out of this life is the only way out. Like, it's a cycle that is unbreakable. But you have to be very strong in order for you to say no. Yeah. And prepare to walk alone. Yeah. Because it's a lonely journey when you know the truth and you stand by the truth, Lynn. It can get lonely. I know. But you have the backup of heaven yes. and you can move. You can move. And that is where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And I continue to trust God every day. Yes. And I know mm. it's getting better. Amen. I don't want you to give up on your art. Yeah. I don't want to give it to you to give up on what God has put inside you. Yeah. yeah. You get it. Yes. I want you to go out there and conquer. Yeah. And give us this beautiful music. Yeah. I've seen it on your YouTube channel. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. And the fact that you are doing this before people even came into your life. Yes. You know, yeah. I always say, mm -hmm. I don't regret lessons in life. It's, it's true. what makes us us. It's true. You know, who knows where your life will end up? It's true. Who knows how many souls you've saved just true. by sharing your story? Yeah. You know, who yeah. knows who you are bound to become yes. after this. Yes. So more grace to you, Amen. more love and light to you. Amen. I want you to tell our people where they can find you, Yeah. how they can be able to contact you, yeah. which contact details you are comfortable with. Yeah. But before that, mm -hmm. is there anything you feel like we left out that we need to still touch on? Uh, I think I've 
I've tried my best yeah. to get as detailed as yes. possible. Yeah. Maybe the only thing is I'm working on forgiveness. You know, people tell you, get over it. It's done. It's done. No, get no. over it. But they forget it took a long time yes. to go into that. Yeah. And it takes time also to rebuild mm. what you almost lost. Mm. So I'm working on forgiveness. Yeah. I'm not there yet. Yeah. Lynn, take I'll your time. Line. I'll take my time. And I pray that I'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry for what you went through. Thank you. I'm sorry for what you went through. Thank you. May healing find you. May it locate you. Yeah. All right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Where can people find you? So I've been sharing my story on my channel mm. and uh, I, I want this to get to the farthest corners of the earth because prophets are everywhere. Men of God are everywhere mm. and girls are everywhere. Mm. <laughs> so I've wanted my story to reach out to people. So I have a YouTube channel yeah. that I share my story. Let me start with the music yes. one yeah. because that's, that's my biggest. Mm. It makes me glad. Mm. My music channel is called Martha Rena. Mm -hmm. Rena is R E N A. Mm -hmm. That's a stage name. It's yeah. not my real name. Yeah. So Martha Rena, please go and subscribe. Yes, and... <laughs> yeah. yeah. So please go and subscribe. Yeah. And I want to, to let this go. What is in my heart? I have so much music to give. And I'm trusting God to just keep releasing it. Amen. Regardless of the past regardless yes. i have so much yes. because the devil wants to steal what you have yeah but god just protects it yes and i feel that it's mm. in there mm. so please uh pray for me as i move on into more production of music yes. to the glory of god Amen. the second one is my my channel my my stories channel yes. it's called Matharina stories and testimonies yes there I just share my story, you know, the traumas. I just try to process stuff. Yeah. It's not as perfect, but yes. it's just my way of letting go yes. and for people to learn from my yes. story and what happened and everything. Yeah. So if you're going through divorce, separation, yes. mm. childhood issues, mm. healing the inner child, I just go there. Sometimes I just go and rant, you yes. know, and, and that's what has healed me yeah. a lot. Yes. Because when you don't have so many friends that you talk to, mm. that has been like that place of letting stuff mm. go. Mm. So please go ahead and just subscribe on that. Yes. And then if you want to reach out to me, you can send me an email on matharina yeah. 21 that's one, yes. uh, matharina 21 at gmail.com. Yeah. And I also, my phone number, yeah. is it okay if I give that? If you're okay with it. Okay, I can mm -hmm. give it out because mm -hmm. I have another private one. Yeah. It's 0727-722-592. Okay. That's the, the number on all my channels. Yes. It's the number on all my music channels. Yeah. So... If I don't answer your call, give me time. I'll get back to you. But that's the number that you can reach out to me. Yes. Yeah. More grace to you. Thank when are you. you hitting the studio again? Should be end of January. End of that's January. That's my goal. Yeah. Yay. Yes. I don't have much. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I'll take care of your audio oh, oh. and a video for one of your songs. Oh, thank you. I don't you. have my but. Thank I feel you. the need to tap into oh your blessing. Oh my goodness, thank you. You know, so when you settle, yeah. just let me know. Thank you. Yes, you thank are you. kai. Bado jaona God wearing. Thank you. Who says I'm using it in the instructions? Me, I am telling you. Yeah. Wait and see. Yeah. You, you are yet to see. Amen. The reason for this testimony. I believe you know, so. No, the reason for the test. Yes. Can you are yet to witness the testimony I behind believe, it. I believe. Amen. With all my heart. Yes. The best is yet. Okay. Yeah. Go out there and conquer. Yes. Just as you are conquering. Amen. Blossom. Amen. Blossom, mother. Amen. Blossom. Amen. We are 80% loading. Yeah. We will be 100%. So, okay. Amen. Wishing you all the best, my friend. Thank you. Yes. May Thank you continue you. being a voice of reason. Thank you. Yeah. I will. No God is proud this conversation happened. I can feel it here. Thank you. It's all Thank over you. here. He's Thank happy you for this the honor. happened. Thank you for Cindy the honor. I appreciate yes. you also. Yes. Yeah. Shall we wind up? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. My people, 
Thank you so much, so much, so much, so much for watching. If there are matters, I'm passionate about it, such matters, because the stories I've sat across, the people I've interviewed, and the people who have lost themselves in such things, one of them religion, they are many. But may that be not your portion. Kai, let that not be your portion. Eh? And even if it is, may God give you the grace to rise up again just like mother. Yeah. Now, to the men of God, the prophets and the prophetess who have seen a very beautiful here opportunity mm -hmm. to eat where they do not plant, to harvest where they have nothing to harvest from. Mm -hmm. People who have caused confusion to families, those who think that, oh, statements such as do not touch the anointed or cause them harm, you've used that to manipulate and brainwash people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is also coming and it will not be plenty. It, no, it will not be pretty. Yeah. It's coming. It will not be pretty. But I cannot tell you the magnitude of doors that we are going to open with our stories. And this is why I say, me, I'm not scared of anything. Because what God has instructed me to use, allow me to use that word, yeah. though I know you hate it deeply. <laughs> what God has instructed me to do in this world, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Whether it annoys you or it makes you happy, I am going to do it. For every person, because again, as I said, that's the abuse we don't talk about, religious abuse. You know, for every person who is entangled in that mess, just know your Bible right there has all the answers you need. Mm -hmm. And God is just waiting to listen to you. You get it. Let's just have this conversation, people. Our people out here are suffering because of this man of God. Oh, my mom, my dad, man of God. You know, and as I said in the previous video, you have people who don't have anything to eat, but they are busy filling the pockets of their mom and dad. Now, me, I don't subscribe to that. That's not what the word says. Open your Bible. You are following everything else, but the only thing you are not doing is opening your Bible. Mm -hmm. Today, let the challenge be, open your Bible. Mm -hmm. Let the prophets come to confirm what's already there. Mm -hmm. His instructions, his isijuinini, our families are falling apart. Yeah. You can see even from the last video, how many people have said, oh my God, this is happening to my mom. She cannot listen to any of us. Mm -hmm. We are the enemies. Continue talking life into that person. Mm -hmm. As mother's dad did, he continued talking life into her chaos. Mm -hmm. Continue talking life. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, MLK once said, I might be out of context, but he said something in regards to the silence of the good people. When the good people keep quiet, that's how we lose. The silence of the good people is dangerous. Get out there and use your voice to create awareness. And also, if you are just there letting evil prosper because you are scared, thou shall not touch the anointed. My friends, we perish because of lack of knowledge. Don't be scared. God did not give you the spirit of fear. He commanded you to command other things. Even ako kadogo, tuendo ujitafti, ndiyo msea kikama na kuambia hapa, I have been instructed, mshu wapana, hata vas flani nasema, kila mtu waende ya work hard. Go work. Even God worked and he rested a day. Go work. Go harvest where you know you've planted. It's about time you reflect and ask yourself, what kind of religion am I subscribing to? What kind of Christianity am I subscribing to? Do you even have answers as to why you keep calling people mom and dad, mom and dad, mom and dad? Do you even know why you're doing that? You know, and you can't even talk to your own parents. The, the mom and dad that actually gave birth to you, you won't talk to them. But you hear at just, you know, giving so much respect to someone who is not even blood. But you show them so much respect and love that you forget your own parents back at home. And let me tell you what narcissism does because religious narcissists are also there. They will separate you from your family yeah. so that when your family like mother, sister start seeing one plus one is not making sense, they can't talk to you mm -hmm. because they've already created a wall between you and the family. Yeah. Stay woke. All right. Thank you so much for watching this series. 
Let me know in the comment section what other conversation you would want us to start having. Thank you for the love you showed heinous crime. I will try and bring such episodes, but I can't guarantee you I can do them weekly, maybe two times in a month. But thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for willing to have these hard conversations with us because this is how we change the world. Don't fear no one. God did not give you that spirit of fear. Use your voice. You stay in there and being silent when you see things are not going okay because me spending drama. Hi, Abasi. Wait and see. Wait and see. If you cannot talk back against that, oh, me spending drama, and you can see wickedness. Eh? Wickedness succeeding in this life. My people, we are not going anywhere. As I said, allow me to wind up here. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. A huge thank you to my incredible team, our legendary camera person and director Edwin Ochien for always filming these episodes, and our amazing editor Sam for compiling this two-part series and making sure it reaches you right on time. See you guys on Tuesday. Take care and may God bless.